in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Are we there? Isaiah chapter 2. The same prophecy was given to prophet Micah. But I like Isaiah's rendition. And the word of the Lord, let me start from verse 1. Came to Isaiah the son of Amoz. What he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. 2 says, and it shall come to pass in the last days. That the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and nations shall flow unto it verse 3 says and many people say many people many people shall go and say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord to the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for out of zion shall go forth the law and the word of the lord from jerusalem hallelujah it is important for us as believers please you can drop your bible now and listen it is important as believers to understand that there is a territorial dimension to kingdom advance kingdom advance generally speaks of extending the influence the reign and the influence of the christ when prophet isaiah received the messianic prophecy that would talk about jesus it was said in that prophecy that of the increase of his government and his peace there will be no end that means of the continual advancement and expansion of christ his purposes and the peace that comes in that kingdom there will be no end so this is a kingdom that grows please understand this he says i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail i know that looking at society right now it looks like the church is not growing it looks like the purposes of christ is not advancing but i want you to know that the church is growing and the purposes of christ is advancing The Bible declares that it is God's desire that the Lordship of Christ be established first in the hearts of men. Please say the hearts of men. One more time, say the hearts of men. And then number two, across territories. So kingdom advance is twofold. The establishment of the Lordship of Christ first in the hearts of men. The purposes of Christ must be established in the hearts of men. Then number two, it must be, it must be frontiered across territories. That means it is not enough that individuals be saved. It is not enough that individuals come under the governing influence of the Christ. It is time to start taking cities. Cities. The Bible says these are they, the book of Acts, that have turned the world upside down. The story of revival as we read first from scripture and then through modern history talks about men and women. According to Hebrews 11, the Bible says they subdued kingdoms. Everybody says subdued kingdoms. I'm teaching us this dimension because I was so touched dealing with the teachings that I had with um, CGC. And then it, I was reminded again that it is not enough for us to just win souls in terms of individuals it is time for us to obtain grace from god to start taking cities he says ask of me of the hidden 
I will give them to you for your inheritance. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is time for us to take systems, structures, nations, and bring them under the lordship of the Christ. This is one of the ways that the kingdom will advance. Now look up. I gave an analogy in the morning while teaching during the church service uh, of CGC. And I told them that you may not have seen the founders of Nokia or um, Blackberry or whatever it is, your Apple products. But they have so done something to the territory that if your phone gets missing, lost or spoiled, you remain restless until another one comes. They have forced the necessity of that product in your life you no matter how conservative you are when you lose your phone you don't just keep quiet you will say glory be to god but you will do something about it they have they have they have indoctrinated a generation into believing that without a phone a gadget like this your life is incomplete now that's powerful because that's exactly how the kingdom was supposed to become institutional that a day must come in the life of a city when if there is no service in a day people will say what is wrong not just on sundays alone not just on mondays alone they gather daily in the early church that a day will come where it should not be that there is no christian within a territory it should not be that god is void of men and women who can advance his purposes within a territory kingdom advance is territorial that means that we are not entirely free until our territory is free i repeat we are not entirely free until our territory is free i can enjoy the freedom that comes with a new life as an individual but i am still in bondage because if the territory has not come under the lordship of the christ i can be affected listen to me i can be affected by the value system that is predominant within a territory even though i have been exempted by my new birth experience such is the case that we experience here in the north such is the case that we experience in africa i give you an instance i am not a corrupt person you are not a corrupt person but we are victims of the consequences of corruption for instance why because we are immersed in a territory that still holds corruption as a value system so we're not entirely free listen this message is aimed at correcting the mistake that esther was about to make hallelujah her man was conniving with the king and attempting to manipulate and influence him to bring the people of god under servitude and bondage to pass a law that will fight and annihilate the jews are we together esther is in the palace as the privileged wife of ahasuerus having the opportunity to influence the program of god she was comfortable i hope you know that as the first lady of a king who was lord over 127 provinces a province is what will be equivalent to a continent a province is not a local government a province is not it will be the equivalent of what we call a continent today and so literally he was like the lord of the then world 127 provinces and here's a woman with the power and the influence to see that the purposes of god are preserved but because of the beauty and the security that came with the palace she ignored mordecai and mordecai sent a warning and said do not think when they finish with us when they find out you are a jew in other words although you are free in the palace you are not free in the nation are we together now esther's advocacy the entire book of esther was not about esther trying to protect herself she was already free remember she was the king's wife the same way you are already free as the bride of christ but the territory is in trouble there is a mordecai somewhere manipulating the government and the in the the positions of influence to antagonize the program of god and the holy spirit stands as our mordecai 
and he's speaking to the esther of the king and saying do not be comfortable just because you can buy a car just because you can eat just because you are happy just because things are well with you just because your church looks like it's doing well if the kingdom the program of god the territory is not captured to come under the influence of christ it means one day what you call liberty will not be liberty indeed hallelujah praise the lord god is a god who is territorial in context he deals with people he deals with things territorially I have heard of stories where flourishing churches, flourishing nations were locked down in a moment because another Pharaoh arose who did not know Joseph. When I was studying, preparing for this, I studied and it surprised me to find out that North Korea was once a center of revival on earth. Can you imagine that? North Korea. That once upon a time there was an outpouring of the spirit china was once a place of massive revival the hand of god was strong upon that europe you study the story of people like john knox and the rest mighty men of and women of god john knox who took over scotland through the power of prayer and intercession and right now some of these places have become monuments today palestine many of the apostolic activity of paul happened within rome palestine and all of those those nations and today you can hardly find anything that represents the purposes of god do you know why because the individuals were free but the territory was not free daniel was free as a person he had been exalted to be one of the kings inner circle but the program of god in babylon was still in bondage and all of a sudden darius i mean uh, nebuchadnezzar decides to build a 90 feet statue of gold and says when you hear the trumpet when you hear all of these things bow down to it three hebrew boys came out to stand and be different they wanted to be different but they had to pay the price for fighting the mindset of a territory listen please hear me you are not free when your territory does not call upon your god the nation of israel were in egypt to receive succor because there was no bread there was no wine food had finished but because joseph was there in power and pharaoh had committed the entire governance of egypt unto him the purposes of god could thrive listen carefully the purposes of god could advance under the watch and under the leadership of joseph but egypt did not yet belong to god in terms of territorial alliance so when the man who was the advocate of god's program died another pharaoh arose and when that pharaoh arose he changed his policy look how easy it is to bring the purposes of god to jeopardy one man can just arise who does not believe in your conviction and that's the end of it we are not free until our territory is free dominion must be territorial is god speaking to us commanding influence and dominion over a territory is a dimension of the gospel that has largely not been understood please look up let me have your attention we have done well in terms of evangelism please come one-on-one -on -one evangelism we have done well in terms of printing tracts excellent we have done well in terms of putting jesus film and going to you know community projects bible translation activities we have done exceptionally well that is commendable except for the fact that it seems as though our lopsided understanding of the gospel and kingdom advance if we do not correct and balance it there will be a serious problem do you know this is the problem today in the west an average elderly person in america is born again 
an average elderly person in america is born again calls upon the name of the lord jesus but an average young person in america is far he's not even close to the gate of the kingdom what happened once upon a time america did not just believe in jesus alone they dedicated their territory they said in god we trust as a as a territorial that means god anywhere you see within the circumference of america it is dedicated as the space for your influence god is a god of territory what did he give to abraham not just the blessing he gave him access to territory god is always territorial he wants territories to be captured for him and this is a dimension of kingdom advance that people have gotten wrong please look up when we talk about um there is a concept that is used especially in the pentecostal circle it's called take over and it's a concept that came from the revelation of scripture that a time will come the mountain of the lord's house that a time will come the world will bring influence and and i believe that but there is a dimension of our takeover concept that is wrong for many of us our concept of takeover means one day nigeria will be like dubai one day um haiti will be like europe um i don't think it's going to happen not at this side of god's program so the idea of takeover is not just in terms of infrastructural development no remember that territory is about people people the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof the walls and they that dwell in them so uh, the idea is not an advocacy to make nigeria become like dubai one day it's a wonderful project if it ever happens are we together but the idea is to see that the ideology of a territory now this is where we're talking about so when we're talking about territorial dominion we are not looking at it from a carnal fleshly standpoint although there is a socio-economic implication but primarily we are talking of the church ascending to a point where the church is in charge of the mind control systems write it down the mind control systems across every territory this is how dominion happens when the mind control systems that means the instruments that are used to shape the paradigm the understanding and the perception of people within a territory comes under the influence of the church that is dominion everyone please say mind control systems one more time shout it say mind control systems So when we talk about territorial dominion the idea is not to drive muslims drive traditionalists from a territory in that the only people here are just christians that's not the idea because the same lord is rich unto all are we together now it was the mistake that alexander the way wanted to make because of his passion to see this territorial take over the idea was to drive every non-christian out of a region and he tried to do it and he came up with a city called zion city right it was a city that would become a prototype of his idea that means a city that was entirely built upon righteousness where there was nothing that represented darkness there and i understand that but this is not exactly the concept until jesus comes there will still be sinners on earth until jesus comes there will still be non-christians on earth the same lord sends rain upon the godly and the ungodly are we blessed very powerful concept your christianity in terms of kingdom advance will be very meaningless if you don't understand this this is the reason behind the frustration of many christians who are now born again now filled with the holy spirit and then they tend to ask what more because the advocacy the proposition that was given to them at their new birth experience was that they should prepare for heaven and that is wonderful and now this guy realizes that he has 90 more years to live how many years 
So let's assume that this guy is 35. 90 plus 35. This is a long time to live not knowing what you are doing. Are we together? Yes. So many people are frustrated because the ritual of going to church on Sunday, then midweek prayer on Wednesday, then maybe a prayer meeting on Friday, then another fellowship, and then the ritual continues. Then once in a while, a conference comes. Then once in a while, a revival program comes. Then marriage is added to it. Then children added to it. Then old age is added to it. It finally ends up in the grave. It's not a wise way of living. An intelligent God would not design that system of living. There is enough to occupy you to make your life worthwhile that you check the time and say, my God, can you imagine 20 years is gone right now? I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The Bible says the harvest is wide, but the laborers are few. Let me add, not to add to scripture, but I think the laborers are also foolish. They are not just few. There, there is need to trust God for an impartation. He says wisdom is profitable to direct. It's already an emergency that the laborers are few. And then if the laborers that are there are not wise, operating by the wisdom of heaven, then we'll be in trouble. If you do not love this message, you are selfish because it means you are not thinking about your children. May God forbid it that it will be in our lifetime. Pharaohs will arise from our territory that will hijack this place, that our children will be sent to servitude. Do you know, let me tell you, God forbid, but if a crisis breaks out in Africa, right, or Nigeria, most of our parents who are already close to their grave, it's just to push them and they're in. They're already close there. You, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> Believers are very careless sets of people. We always think darkness is so far until our carelessness allows it to come near. To come near to a point that our children will no longer have the... Who would have believed that the Ten Commandments will be removed today in schools? Look up, please. Who will that believe? We're not talking of Saudi Arabia. We're not talking of North Korea. Are we together? We're not talking of the Gulf nations. We're talking of a nation that has stood to herald the gospel for decades. And right now, individuals within a parliament would sign and say, get this thing out. You discipline your child, you are going to court. That means you flog the child, behave well, be a good disciple of Jesus. Straight, someone is punishing you for violating the fundamental right of that child. Are we together? I know a great man, a very wealthy man whose son was in the U.S. When he clocked 18 and he came back, the mother shouted, he told her, stop that, I am 18. The mother beat nonsense out of him. <laughs> now, it's not an advocacy for violence and child abuse. Please, don't misunderstand me. I'm speaking to nations. There are people following us from around the world. But the idea is that most people think your personal salvation means territorial salvation no there is personal salvation i am saved but there is territorial salvation i am safe pray for the peace of jerusalem not the peace of the prayer warrior the prayer warrior is already free but jerusalem is in trouble pray for the peace of Jerusalem he said they shall prosper that love thee hallelujah I thank God for the profound mentorship of dr. miles Monroe in and to my life we continue to be the fruits of his apostleship advocating a balanced understanding of kingdom advance the evangelical has done well we respect and we honor and we continue to bless them. I came out of the evangelical circles, but the imbalance of 
advocating personal salvation alone as the ultimate key to taking over territories is an error an individual salvation is important but we must understand the principles that bring christ to be enthroned territorially look at this i love the way the bible puts it as for me and my as for me and my why is it important for your house to serve the lord if they don't want to serve that's their cup of tea no as for me and my house one time when they were fighting jericho they were instructed to not take anything is that true that no substance should be taken specific instructions were given and one man decided to hide something for himself because of that an entire day a, a, a little city began to defeat them now imagine the innocent people that died because of one person's contribution her man single-handedly was going to destroy the entire nation of the jews We must command influence and dominion territorially to establish posterity. Our children are at the mercy of our spiritual understanding. The continuity of God's program is at the mercy of our spiritual understanding. Do not say like Esther, I am happy. I am comfortable. I know that I'm going to heaven. If you like, kill me, I'm going to heaven. What of your children? What of your grandchildren? Sometimes this selfish approach to martyrdom, we think that just because you are ready to die for Jesus, I, what of the rest? Are they ready? If I'm ready to die for Jesus and this guy is not ready, the proof that I love Jesus is that for his sake, I should say, Lord, give us time. Let this man be ready too. Most of us don't know that this is our advocacy for martyrdom. It looks spiritual. It's selfishness. Lord, even if it's to kill, let them kill. I'm ready now. No. No, we are not ready. We are not ready. There are souls that should be saved. There are territories that must come under the influence of Christ. Paul said, for me to live is Christ. And even if I die, is gain. But they killed him and he came back. Correct? They killed Paul when they left. He got up, shook himself, and said, You are joking. There is still, there are still many other places. If I die today, it is gain for me, not for God's program. If I die today, it is gain for me as an individual, but God's program on earth will suffer a heavy blow. So what do I do as proof that I love him? Reject and cast the spirit of death. Anywhere I see it, not out of fear, but out of my desire to see that I'm alive and strong to continue advocating the frontiers of the kingdom. If you love God, don't die. Don't die soon. Live long. Remain alive. You think I'm just motivating you. Tonight's message, we're just warming up. I have some serious things to talk about here. Let me tell you this. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Africa is coming under siege. Nigeria is coming under siege. There are powers that have intelligently been coordinating a campaign to frustrate the purposes of the Christ. And because believers do not understand the territorial dimension of kingdom advance, we continue to flatter ourselves in the palace like Esther, whereas Haman is already plotting the defeat of God's people. But thank God for Esther's. Thank God for Esther's. Doesn't mean you're a lady. Esther is a prophetic office. Thank God for Esther's. The saviors that shall arise from Zion are we together there are principles i want to share with you now the remnant that will preserve the purposes of the christ and make that preservation transgenerational take note of the word transgenerational by the grace of god if christ tarries 
I want to be able to stand from the shores of heaven and see that God's program still continues because we supplied a template that could not be bent. Hmm. We mentored believers in a way and manner that even though we have gone, they still continue to stand to see that the purposes of Christ is advanced. Let me tell you this. The Jews and those in Israel were very wise. Although many of them have not personally come into the knowledge of Christ. But they have used the principles of Judaism to understand that it is not enough to be connected to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Our territory must also come. And so when the neighboring nations fight territory, they say no. Believers have this foolish understanding that because the purposes of Christ is only in our hearts. What do you need land for? What do you need this for? Are we together now? Yes. There are cities that when you entered, you can almost not find land for church. Do you know why? Because the territorial dimension of kingdom advance was not taught the leaders in those days. When there were free lands to get, they thought that evangelism is all about, once Jesus is in your heart, no worry. How, how long do you have to live? And the platforms, right now believers are stranded. To have a place of worship is a problem. Because it's a campaign that was taken with intelligence over decades. And the leaders, as well-meaning as they were, they were not strategic enough in understanding the territorial dimension of kingdom advance. But in the name of Jesus, under our watch and in our lifetime, not only individuals will lift up the name of the Lord, we will compel territories. We will hijack the mind control systems, the strata that manipulates the understanding of men. This is what we are living for. And it will happen. We are not noisemakers. There is a power and a force that backs us. We do not speak cunningly devised fables. We have been given the blueprint of God's program and we are following accordingly. Usually we will look like talkatives until you see it come to pass. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house you know every time I read that scripture I know that God was not talking to somebody and asking me to share that idea he was writing it and saying Apostle Joshua Selman see it this is your mandate I've taught you here that you must find where it was written about you in scripture not prophetically directly not everything written in scripture was for the saints alive Many of them were written waiting for the real owner of that prophecy. I found things in this Bible I believe they were written for me. It's true. Hallelujah. I would share with us four principles tonight. If you love Jesus Christ and you desire to see a generation after a generation. If you desire to see Nigeria the north kaduna state africa and indeed the globe stand and honor the name of the lord then pay attention to the things i want to teach you number one the first principle allocated by god's wisdom for territorial takeover thank you is the warfare dimension of prayer and intercession the first principle given to the saints by which we compel territories to come under the influence of the Christ is the priestly ministry of prayer and intercession. Take it high for me, Mike. Listen, believers, please look at me. Prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is for saviors. There is no such thing as I don't pray because I'm not a prayer warrior. And when I talk of prayer, remember that I've weaned us away from this baby channel, uh, uh, canal, milk-like prayer of give me tea, give me bread. He said, ask me for the nations. We're talking of prayer. John Knox prayed a prayer and said, Lord, give me Scotland, not give me an estate. Give me a territory or take my life. That you can carry one city and cut a map and put it in your prayer altar and that becomes your prayer lord to see your glory engulf zaria no way for darkness 
a new spirit is about to be introduced in the territory and angels clear them out of the way because the saints are alive the bible says hell had enlarged itself there are spirits that have not yet come to africa but will come i hope you know that all we see is not all there is there are inventions of mysterious sicknesses that the devil wants to send but there must be men and women who are true watchmen not just watchmen as talk i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower men who can pray darkness away men who can pray light into being men who can pray until a savior arises Anna the prophetess there's no record of scripture that she was praying for a husband i hope you know she was a widow she had a legitimate ground to say oh lord while i'm visiting you now sort my life she said leave the issue of my life now i continue to pray until my eyes see the consolation of israel when jesus was brought to the temple she said now let my soul rest i am ready to go i finally seen him Hi. may god raise those kinds of christians in our days people who are concerned about the program of god more than the personal interests of tea and bread don't get me wrong these things are important but your heart when you study the world's reviver evan roberts evan roberts was 26 years old when god used him to shut down the city of wales 26 many of you here are older than him when this revival happened the young man began to pray and say lord i am tired of seeing this kind of christianity i see within my territory powerless christianity and he began to pray and for a period of six months he was going to heaven every day every day from between the hours of 12 and 4 he would have a divine visitation it was the product of that visitation they got a little school for him to just start a little program and that was where the fire started people will read about what happened in wales in the newspaper and right there that fire will engulf them smith wiggles what prophesied that it will happen again yes he told lester sumro that it will happen again he said before you die make sure you don't die with this anointing find young men transfer this mantle upon them so that we, listen this thing we are carrying did not just start with us it's a relay i don't know how old what is on me is all i know is that i received it it's like an olympic touch it's easy for us to sit down and criticize our fathers criticize the founders of different movement they brought error they brought this and run our mouths and talk nonsense and not know that now the stage is ours do you not see the eyes of eli becoming dim do you not see that the time is almost finished and god is calling on samuel samuel you are sleeping wake up eli is about to go it's a call for a generation i speak what i speak in parables but it is true the eyes of eli is closing and if Samuel does not wake up and become that prophet whose word does not fall to the ground. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. We will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Na doka ka sunanka, ubangi jika isalabo. Na kima ma sunanka, ubangi jika. Ni na doka ka sunanka, ubangi. It's an anthem for a generation. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing. 
Rela Parado Salabala. We will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. Sit down. There used to be a song that we sang in a seminary that our generation will call your name. This is not a sermon for tea and bread. This is not a sermon for give me this. God will do it. But we're talking of nations. The ministry of warfare and intercession that an anointing must come upon a generation to pray not for the purpose of showing who is more powerful there has to be a grace it's a corporate mantle it's not just prayer groups it's starting now as little prayer groups little a time will come there will be no leader It's a grace homes will become prayer altars schools will become prayer it does not matter who wants to say what it is an ordinance signed by god's integrity let me tell you this if we cannot pray as a generation we're in trouble darkness will stamp us and stamp our children oh her man do not rejoice esther is still in the palace esther is still in the palace and she still has access to Hazarus. That which has been signed can be changed. Listen to me. The days that are coming are days when we have to trust God to sort our personal needs fast so that it can give us room to focus. All this issue of coming to preach series just about tea and bread we're talking of nations our children are in trouble Skataba, Jada Sidas, Ebrezi Gete Lesia Hasabandaka, Raparuto Supra Catiana, Rata Cinemas, Kele Barutasia, men carrying things that belong to a generation, not a program, not a conference, carrying mantles that are generational. Hebrew Sele Barutasia. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10.
verse 10 see I have this day set you over territories nations and over kingdoms to root out to pull down to destroy to throw down to build god is giving nations like a man is about to die and he say you my estate in kano is yours god is sharing nations and saying i i allocate territories who can sing for me that song will bow down and say you are god you know the song sit down let's sit down we have to make progress tonight hmm. listen to me there are spiritual forces and controlling powers in every allocated territory every territory that is allocated has spiritual powers listen to me these spirits influence culture these spirits create negative patterns in the minds of people they are called familiar spirits there is a reason why they are called familiar spirits they are spirits that have dwelt with people they grew up with people i shared this morning during the church service that one time i remember i was in shiroro we were ministering in a crusade and i saw a group it was up to 15 or 16 people women it was a pattern i saw there the moment the women gave birth they became deaf and dumb immediately i said what is this it was no longer a sickness listen when you see a widespread of a pattern it's a testimony that a controlling power is reigning within a territory every territory in nigeria has the signature of the controlling powers there are territories where no matter how great the men study is the women that feed the men territories there are territories that are associated with certain things anger rage there are territories that are associated with early death you go to the territories and the youngest person is 60 years old but there are no children the parents use the children to live long controlling powers there are territories where you must end like your past you don't end like your future you can go to the u.s and spend 10 years and return back to the village in one room it's not about habits there are spirits there are many of us who have uncles who will tell you this one was a ceo this one was a customs officer but right now if you give him ten thousand he will say thank you what happened these powers there are churches there are territories where a church cannot survive five years impossible something must happen the man will die a scandal will tear him down something must happen there are powers when daniel began to pray 
the prayer was affecting the spirit of the Medes and the Persians. The spirits that controlled Medopersia. His prayer, Daniel was not saying, Lord, sort me out. Uh -uh. He found out that the time of the captivity of Israel in Babylon had come to pass. And he started praying. I, Daniel, understood by books. I read and I saw that by this time in prophecy, we should not be in captivity. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And he began to pray. And when he began to pray, heaven, don't mind the people talking nonsense that they don't know. This is not about New Testament and Old Testament. It's what happens in the realm of the spirit. The moment they began to pray, Gabriel, the angel that brings messages, the angel of service, that archangel left the third heavens and on his way coming to the earth, he was hijacked from the second heavens by one who the Bible calls the prince of Persia, not the demon of Persia. There is ranking in the spirit, a prince, not a traditional ruler, a prince. Let me tell you this. The foolishness of many believers alongside our pride is why Satan will tear nations down. All these childish teachings that continue to move around that negates the reality of the realm of the spirit and the fact that there needs to be the contention of the saints will destroy our generation. Some of those teachings are deceptions activities of lying spirits the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and they will give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons we are watching darkness before us and we are pretending it is not there we are watching a woman barren her daughter barren granddaughter barren we say nothing is happening how can you say nothing is happening A grandmother raped by someone the mother raped by someone the granddaughter raped by someone you say nothing is happening find a way to believe it early in your life that there are controlling powers they don't attack you they are not interested in you they attack territories there are spirits that attack you there are spirits who don't even know who you are they were allocated to a territory when jesus was about to cast the spirit they begged him not to leave the territory we can leave the man but keep us in the territory <laughs> hallelujah please listen to what i teach you this is the redemption of our children is the preservation of God's program within our land. There is a spirit now that attacks age ranges from 10 to 18. Once you are more than 18, it does not disturb you. It's like Satan has plotted his graph and found out that the most useful age range now are our teenagers. He's not disturbing babies. He's not disturbing the young people. The old people already, they're already there. But those teenagers... I know this by the widespread pattern in our teenagers. Their resentment for God, their obsession for technology, they are outspoken that the vocal defiance that they have is the spirit of rebellion. And we are watching, saying nothing is happening. One day my child will grow and a child of 12 shouting at his mother and while he's doing it from every territory, they are doing it. There is a spirit making it happen. Do you believe what I'm sharing? There are some of us, we cannot talk to our younger brothers or sisters now. We are 10 years older than them, but you dare not open your mouth to talk to them. You just think they are being stubborn. No! It's a spirit. The spirit of defiance. The spirit of rebellion. When those age ranges become our governors and our senators, that's when you will see the full assault 
of darkness ah but not when we are alive mm -mm. Mm -mm. god has men elisha said tell no man to come and let him know there is a prophet in israel not there is a god in israel hallelujah you do a program now and you want to put it on mainstream tv if there is the name jesus there is the name holy spirit there is the name eternal life it falls under the same category as some of those words that we they don't allow to be pronounced including god jesus ah. you tell a preacher to preach and there's no name jesus there's no salvation there's no god there's no redemption what is he preaching The most destructive manifestation of demons is their ability to manipulate the thinking of men it's not their ability to inflict sickness no that's cheap it's not their ability to bring death that's cheap but to keep a man alive and to hijack them whom the god of this world who blinded their mind the god of this world there are gods that station within territories there are territories where you don't find old men. The oldest man is 43. Because anybody that crosses it dies. I've seen territories like that. There are territories where all their men are dead. The territory is full of women. Because all the men die. Some of you know what I'm talking about. It was only the male figures in your family the devil took their lives away. And left the women. Was it not the firstborn male that was killed when Moses was born? Not women. Was it not the firstborn male two years and above that was killed when Jesus was born? Imagine all those women. It's a principle. So mothers are becoming both mothers and fathers because controlling powers are there. And while that is happening, we are laughing. You know, I've told you about a saying in my village that when you see your neighbor's beard, on fire get water and soak your own don't laugh the same fire is coming to you we must pray oh we must pray there are spirits we must pray when i came i was asking it to me about the testimony of the dear lady one a precious lady that i came i met I saw you people so excited and I wanted to know what was going on. And when he told me the story, I said, you see it now? And someone would tell that lady that the only attack she has is the one in her mind. Are you joking? Are you joking? I've seen demons so. This is not something I'm just talking. I've seen them. The first time I saw a real physical demon, it was then in the campus. I was at going to the back of a generator. There used to be a generator there. And as soon as I turned, I saw a real spirit. And he said, get back. That's what he told me. I'm not talking nonsense that was you read in a storybook. They are not cunningly devised fables. I've seen these spirits. They are real. I know what they do on earth. I know what they do in families. There are controlling powers that destroy marriages if you do not stand your ground i love you i love you is nonsense just keep going one day you will wake up and see the same woman you love that was there for you and this spirit will land on your head like a mantle and you see what happens to you what of men who kill their children have you not seen a trend recently now a trend of rape rape huh that all these guys just come and just rape ladies do you think those guys are just driven by desire are there no prostitutes no it's more than desire it's a spirit there is something it seeks to do sodomy is a spirit you know that right there is something it does and pleasure is not one of it spiritual intelligence we need to stay and ask god to teach us wisdom let us know his ways 
hallelujah i know territories where when you rise up if you dare open your mouth and say everybody come and celebrate with me see what the lord has done from that day you must go down joseph told his brothers i had a dream it's not my fault i went to bed and i had a dream the sun the moon 11 stars and the brother said that's all right they were the ones who were going to kill him listen we must learn to pray these spirits out of the way we must learn to pray these distractions you see the things that are happening in zaria now some of the developments the roads don't you think it's technology that is bringing it? It's a signature of the prayer of the saints. Shut down the prayer of the saints in this city. Then you will know what Satan has always wanted to do. I believe in the ministry of prayer. It is not the issue of being a Pentecostal. The days are coming when it will no longer be an issue of devotion in the morning or praying for a sermon. You are praying to secure your children. Listen, let me tell you, this day and age, listen, do you know if your child leaves home to go to school, you should pray. What happens to that child from the door of your house to school? That child is under the tutelage of someone you do not even know. By evening, he will come back and ask you and ask you questions that you cannot sleep. Daddy, what is this? And you say, Who taught you? Say, My teacher taught me. Your teacher? Yes, sir. Controlling powers. Koinonia is not thriving just because Satan does not know we are here. Is striving because of the invincibility of prayer fire I said it in the morning that there are departments in this ministry I supervised by myself and there is a reason why because of the strategic role that they play now every department plays that strategic role but because of the spiritual component the prayer department the worship team you always see me on their case with the leaders there is a reason why because let me tell you the truth when these instruments just become music we're in trouble when this singing just becomes entertainment we're in trouble when the prayer department just becomes a place of fellowship we're in trouble and the fire upon the altar that it shall burn day and night most churches have partners financial partners and that's all right most churches have protocol members that protect the man of god most churches have priority you know activities but the things that keep the fire are not there prayer zero worship zero let me tell you something brothers especially honestly if you are a man in this generation and this time and your priesthood ministry is not at work you are about to destroy your wife and children there is no such thing as pray for me again you pray your way and pray the climate open ah my wife and my child mother mary as you go to church pray for me that thing must end it is my prayer that the homes in koinonia don't become like shrines that they become real homes the proof of masculinity is not the huskiness of your voice is the is the dexterity of your priesthood i've advised us ladies watch out for these things in saying yes don't just say yes carelessly and say time is going the urgency on ground requires men and women who know how to burn the incense Please sit down. There are spiritual forces that shape the minds of people. A lady sent me a text recently. She just graduated. As soon as she graduated, she said she's been feeling like tearing her clothes and running on the street. Now, do you think an intelligent person will behave like that? 
it's a spirit how many graduates have you seen that the moment they finish on their way going home a little kekena pep just turned and left them there till a truck came and climbed them how many people have you seen final exam final paper they just find something on the ground and say that's it you are gone there is no such thing that is just is no coincidence is the manipulation of spirits you have an assignment to sanitize your atmosphere let them know you are alive start with your atmosphere sometimes i walk around my house in the night especially when i'm around i'm just walking around my house do you know not too far from my house there is a graveyard i've not seen one ghost one one ghost where will it enter and come to my house I'm dealing with matters of destiny not, not a ghost coming from somewhere what business has the dead the living to do with the dead i even wanted to buy the place they told me that there are, there are graves there ah, apostle don't buy why you are dead you are dead one time archbishop benson idahosa came and met that they killed a fowl i think it was an incantation and he saw it and he gave it that they should go and help him and cook it <laughs> they had already caught it say why waste why waste meat like this in the name of nonsense sacrifice god does not love wasted he said gather the crumbs that there be no wastage see let me tell you this if you do not know the power of prayer you will fear demons to death hallelujah we sit down and allow spirits to roam around our houses i know a man true story in just years ago he was slapped by i don't know if he's a ghost or a spirit he he works then in the teaching hospital and he said he used to hear that means the um what they call that place doctor where they keep mortuary in the night while doing his work true story he will hear like discussions you know like people have woken up and they are talking true story and one time he attempted he shouted according to him he said shut up and he i don't know whether he, he wanted to open the door or something i stand before the god of heaven and i lie not and the 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 spirit slapped him until that man died he did not recover spirits are real don't wait till you see them they are real my mother once told me a story they went to bury someone this thing did not i'm, I'm not sure it's more than six seven years they went to bury someone and physically as they were dropping the coffin fire physically fire came out and killed some people not parables not vision fire came out and killed some people have you seen people that they buried and you found a man back in your house all these things will remain when there is no prayer just saying i am the righteousness of god in christ hallelujah that's not the way it works we are legislators we enforce things we don't just wish things this wishing mentality will cost the church a lot no it's impossible who am i that the devil will not come jesus went to fast satan went to join him he was fasting satan was fasting too he was waiting there for 40 days for jesus who do you think you are that you will not come around your vicinity from whence comest thou jesus asked satan he said from voyaging to and fro there was not a place that he did not go to have you considered my servant job yes i came to his house it's only that he built a fortification and i could not access hallelujah right now people are afraid seven o'clock people have to lock up their, sh their shops in many areas they are losing in business why because some tout somewhere will come and waylay them and loot and steal money and the church is just quiet don't be like esther but be like esther 
Siata. You sense anything around your vicinity. You don't wait to understand what it is. Tap your wife and say, wake up. When you do that twice, three times, one month, the devil will know where to pass. See, let me tell you this. Whatever you allow to happen to your life, don't blame God. Whatever you allow to happen to your family, don't blame God. I'm, I'm waking us up that territorial dominion truly happens on the strength of priesthood. Not a need-driven prayer. Hallelujah. I heard of a man recently for one, four years. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be sure so that I don't exaggerate anything. Four years, the wife refused to get pregnant. The man was tired one day. He came back from fellowship. The wife was sleeping. He came and knelt down and put his hand on top of her, her, her stomach and prayed that woman into pregnancy. No, I mean it. If I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. He was tired of this thing and said no. He knelt down. You just sleep. You are my wife. I'm the one who paid your dowry. Let me face this spirit of barrenness. See, there are times in your life you need to get agitated spiritually and stop allowing nonsense to just happen within your territory, within your family. Hallelujah. I was so encouraged when I heard it. Literally prayed, not like impartation or yet. No, he sat down, knelt down on top of his wife's stomach and prayed in tongues until that report changed. You can pray some things out of your life and you can pray some things into your life. There are times that you can put your job, your, your, your certificate on the ground and lock yourself from 12 to 6. You pray until where you did not apply called you. Our generation has not understood the power of prayer. Those who know how to pray are people who do not take no for an answer. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They don't negotiate. They decide and agree. God, are you in this? If God says yes, declare anything that stands the way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. A prayerless territory is a powerless territory. A prayerless couple is a powerless couple. A prayerless business is a powerless business. A prayerless ministry is a powerless ministry. Please sit down. Boy, our time is gone. The first key to territorial dominion is priesthood. Koinonia, pray. Don't just pray on Tuesday. Pray. Pray. You go back this night, trust God for grace. Even if it's 15 minutes, walk around your room a little before you lie down. Apostle, you don't know how busy I am. That is the excuse that is the door that the devil will use to enter your life. If you search for excuses, you will always find one. Let me tell you this. I have taught you and I pray you will believe it. Master the power of night prayers. Master the power of night prayers. A generation that sleeps all through the night into the morning is a generation that would not be powerful. I'm telling you this. See, there is a time when you will enter your Sabbath in experience. A young man, personally, now it's not, I'm not saying this is the Bible, it's my personal understanding that a young man who actually goes to bed by nine to wake up by six and you don't have time for your destiny, you are building rubbles. The night is when men who are men pray. The night is when men who are priests pray. The night is when men who are watchmen pray. The night is when gatekeepers of destiny pray. 
let me tell you sincerely i have not slept in days like real sleep to take out time and sleep it's a sacrifice you are supposed to get a job that god will use to change your family and your territory and while you are sleeping they send a letter from a parastator we need these 41 names in the list and there are spirits waiting there to decide what name will be removed and every other person is in a herbalist shrine forcing his name to remain there and you are snoring away your your sleep is the marker that will clean your name out of that list you can stay and insist i may not have access to the office but i can pray i can pray i've seen the ministry of angels in my life i know that angels are real i know that they are real when you pray there are times i've tried to look for things and i could not find them and i prayed and slept and in my dream I got up and went to where it was and I woke up and went there physically and carried it many of us do not understand the ministry of angels because we do not pray in the name of Jesus every prayerlessness and spiritual laziness upon your life I curse it now this night in the name of Jesus all the movies internet browsing that distract you i'm not saying they are wrong but if it can sit down and distract your prayer life i separate you from it now it was in the night that jacob wrestled with god and got power it was in the night that god came to solomon and he received something men receive things in the night don't waste your night charge your atmosphere sleep under a heavy atmosphere of worship while you are sleeping you are receiving you wake up in the middle of the night and you know an impartation is ongoing see let me tell you these are not things we are these are things we have practiced for years strong worship in that atmosphere while you sleep and you will keep having all kinds of dreams sometimes the dreams will show you the root cause of things sometimes you are hearing a message and in the dream you will start acting the message you are alive to the message Hi. oh lord help our generation help our generation help our generation in the name of jesus christ hear me if you are a minister of the gospel in this place that means you are in ministry or you are trusting god to be in ministry please wake up i deliver you from laziness hear me ministry is not about suits and agbada and protocol ministry is serious business you know all this and i say this respectfully to our younger generation most of these boys do not understand the gravity of attack that can come to your life when you are in ministry they are just happy and just loiter around in pride one attack will kneel you down you need to be powerful with god are we blessed number two goodness the second principle or territorial dominion is the power of faith Hebrews 11 33 the power of faith you cannot take over a territory when you doubt God you cannot take over a territory when you do not believe God Hebrews 11 please read everyone one two read who through faith uh -huh, subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises 
stopped the mouth of lions listen the bible says this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith what is faith your conviction your depth of persuasion on who god is and the integrity of his person that convinces you enough to believe god and take action you will need the audacity that faith brings to reign in life life is not for weak people life is not for risk averse people life is for men and women who are courageous enough to storm the gates of destiny ah, the bible says that listen he said that lot and co were hijacked and captured and abraham said what did i hear you carried my cousin gather all the war men and let us go Hi. courage courage faith the righteous are as bold as a lion that lion dimension is not supposed to help you harass people the lion dimension is so that you will be able to stand in the face of situations and say you can bring your best shot satan i will still be standing it takes faith to build a church it takes faith to start tv ministry that will bless people it does not take money it takes faith first it takes faith to raise your children we are a generation that is obsessed with guarantee give me a guarantee that you will be there for me there is no guarantee anywhere in destiny please hear me everybody say faith when god called me to ministry i called my father and my mother and i knelt down before them and i told them god has called me all my life i'm going to be busy serving the purposes of the kingdom my parents said god bless you we bid you godspeed go well that's it i'm not doing well because the church i was serving before did not give me money no sir listen let me tell you this faith creates everything out of nothing did you hear what i said your house now is in your faith the money you need is in your faith please learn the laws of faith faith is predicated upon a revelation that god is able the ability of god and his integrity everything looks impossible till faith brings it god will never tell you what you can do you know you have had god when what he says is bigger than you when god told me of the things that you'll be doing with this ministry around the world when god showed me and told me the things that you the power of faith but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded lift your voice and pray everyone please pray pray where you are pray from the depth of your heart Please pray from the depth of your heart. Keep a rush, sell a barunda, sada bradegede balada ba. 
pray everyone you are praying in the spirit Kaparato sada brada gede balarabu, embreteke la prasada balato brada gede balarabu. Skala baranda kata pras gede balato sabra gede balarabu, embrata kapro sede belekete shala paria da balaraba, rapado sada branda gada balado. It's a sacrifice you are making for your destiny. It's a sacrifice you are making for his kingdom. Shikaruta Salabara. Two more minutes. Pray in the spirit. Abarada balakata bradegedes. Skade barada balada bakota shada bradegede baladas. Emprata kaparuta shala bradegede balad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Forget about the temporary inconvenience that you are going through you are building something for a generation you are building something that will last rain will come and go but what comes upon you comes and stays are we together now praise the lord let's continue the power of faith now faith is the bible says the substance 
of things hoped for and the evidence, the tangibility of things not seen. Hear me, everyone. You want to take over territories, you will need to believe in God, not believe in an uncle, not believe in an auntie, not believe in an asset, not believe in an investment. You need to believe in God. God is able. I may not know how, but I know that he will build for himself what will bring him glory. Many Christians, and especially our generation, we don't command results because we truly do not walk our faith. We doubt everything and we do not take God at his word. I've given you a little story years ago when I used to bank those days with First Bank, way before many of these facilities started coming that we now use to make banking easier. Then I would not have money at all in the bank. My faith was that rugged. I'm not saying do it. I remember those days I would pray and trust God for miracle alert. And I would stand up and start trekking to First Bank. I would queue for hours believing because I read in my Bible, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believest that thou receivest it. I took it literally. Many times I didn't find anything, unfortunately. But I didn't realize that what I was gaining was more than the money. I was gaining the flexibility of my faith. The, the ability to believe God at his word. Let me tell you this. When you are walking with God, you need to believe God. There are times God will tell you, wake up and go outside. You will go outside and nothing will happen. He will just say, go back. And your going out was profitless, but your faith is being developed. The idea is not for you to go and see or receive something. The idea is an exercise of your faith. So that tomorrow when he says, take this nation, you say, Lord, I'm able. We are well able. Unbelief is dangerous. My only limitation in my life is the voice of God and time. My only limitation in life is the voice of God and time. Time that honors the law of process. If God tells me to walk through this crowd to that door, I will not even see that rain is falling. I'm on my way going. Whatever stands my way, the faith that God gives. Do you not know that faith is a shield? You can use faith as a shield. He said, wherein you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You are not the first to be persecuted. You are not the first to be challenged by evil spirits. It will take your faith to command victory. We are a generation that loves impartation. And impartation is important. But let me tell you something. There are dimensions of destiny work that impartation will not bring. It's a well you have to dig by believing God. If I perish, I perish. When God spoke about koinonia, I believed him. Enough to take action. When God spoke about the messages, being heralded by his angel and taking it around the earth, I believed him. Today we've seen all kinds of miracles over our teachings. You've heard some of them. That someone will buy a brand new flash drive from the place where he bought it and take it home, brand new, out of the cave, slot it in, and there are koinonia messages all. How do you explain that? That's what happened when faith. Listen, you will never see the glory of God until you believe. You will never see the glory of God until you believe. We are a generation that is obsessed with guarantee before we move. Your only guarantee is the word of God. The word of God. Everything God told me about ministry, about destiny, I believed him. I still do. I still do. From the days 
when we could not afford bonds and could not afford a proper meal i believe that was a career of the blessing from the day when i could not pray for one person to be healed of headache i believe that his anointing was upon my life and i believe that he was going to use me we are going to pray one prayer i'm going to change my style of teaching now since there is rain i'm so happy for the rain because it will take away unnecessary formality and keep you to listen so now you are going to pray help my unbelief lord whatever it is that is killing my faith and not allowing me to trust you help my unbelief i claim that i trust you but it's really my uncle that i trust I claim I trust you, but it's really my certificate that I trust. I claim I trust you, but it's really my skill, my gift. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. You are praying it for your destiny. You are praying it so that you can command dominion. Lord, I trust you. The grace to believe you. Believe you for my finances. Believe you to open doors. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not the son of man that he should repent. If he speaks... He is able to bring his word to pass. Please pray, pray. Shila parus kariada balara balaba. Koinonia, pray. He reigns, he reigns, he is standing by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigns, he reigns, my God is an awesome God. hallelujah listen hear me you need to shake off unbelief from your life today and say lord i believe you i may let everyone call me stupid but i believe you let everyone mock me and laugh at me but i believe you i believe you your word is true and i believe you when you say i am great i believe you when you say I am the head, I believe you. When you say I am not the tail, I believe you. When you say Gentiles shall come to my light, I believe you. When you say their kings will come to the brightness of my rising, I believe you. Listen, there are some of you in this place. God has told you you will stand before nations. 
but as it is you look so weak and you will not believe it you don't know the village i come from i cannot even speak english well that's not what god is saying believe me and let me take you there by myself years ago when god told me he was giving me access to kings and people in government i believed him our very first crusade i demanded to see and let us share fellowship with the king of the land we didn't have the opportunity to do it the first time every one of our crusades that we had gone i demanded an audience with the kings because god told me he would give me access to kings i believe god It's none of your business who my father is. It's none of your business who my mother is. That's not what God said. That's not the condition for his word. I believe him. The same way some of you are here and God, you go to bed and you see yourself carrying the baton of generals. You wake up in the morning and say, it's a lie. It's not for people like us. We are the any house. Stop that, that ungodly talk and say, Lord, with all humility, I believe. Let it come. I believe you it was in Port Harcourt I was tending to a sick one of our sick aunties where I was staying in 2007 I was in Port Harcourt and she was on her sick bed she eventually died and I was taking care of her in the teaching hospital there and I was there we were running shifts and then from the I don't know which of the floors now I just looked at um, the window and all of a sudden I was caught up in a vision and in that vision I saw the international headquarters of this ministry I saw 37 flags and I saw white men I saw nations coming I said what is this and God said that's where you are going I believed him I said let's go oh God let's go I believe you God told me I will never beg one king and beg any man for audience. I believed him. I believed him. I believed him. Do, can you believe God? One day I remember growing up, I told my mother, I said, do not worry about the things that are happening. One day, you will eat and never have to beg for bread again and it will be in your lifetime i said it see the righteousness of faith speaks it does not assume you make statements that sometimes you are afraid my wife right now we may be soaking gary but in the name of jesus we will give to nations and when you say the devil will speak to your ears and say foolish man respect yourself my faith it reaches out to you i believe your word for me today my faith reaches out to you i believe listen one day i was praying and the lord spoke to me and said son i will give you a gold mine i believed it literally i know it may have a prophetic meaning but i believed it literally until three years ago when three kings came together to give me 18.5 hectares of a gold mine god said it and i believed it See, listen let me tell you this this ego and the feeling of saying let them not say i believed god and it was a lie if you don't throw that thing away to stand and trust god so what if you find out it's not god that said it you readjust and move this ego is why many people will not grow god said it but i'm ashamed i'm afraid let them not laugh at me 
I remember when God gave me an instruction to empty my entire finance. It was a stupid thing. It was suicidal. But I did it. And God told me I would never beg for bread in my life again. I remember it was in this ministry. God gave an instruction to empty the account of the ministry. Literally 0.00. .00 and I believed him. Stupidly believed him. One week after that. God brought a harvest that till tomorrow we will not recover from. But I know whom I believed. If God says I will give you a house, believe him. If God says you will feed nations, believe him. If God says you will pay the school fees of a generation, believe him. Don't believe your ATM. Let God be true and every man a liar. Please hear what I'm telling you today. This life and this destiny, I stand before the God of heaven. And may I be forgiven if it's a show of arrogance. But there are many things. One of the things that God does with me is he mandates me to declare what he said before it happens. There are many things that I've said. Today, Prof said something here that really touched me. Um, in the morning and he said that one of his daughters he remembered when we were meeting those days on campus and that I said that God is bringing mantle a mantle of people for kingdom financiers and he saw his then little daughter she was rolling under the anointing and he looked at her and was wondering and he said that she got a job and within one year bought a car of over three million and he said he was surprised when God says it, he would do it. If he did it before, he could do it again. Same God right now. Same God right now. If he did it before, if he did it before. When we started the Koinonia worship team, I stopped these guys for many years from going for external ministrations. And I told them, I said, do you know why? I know what God showed me about you. That days will come, you will sing and nations will sing your songs. Stay and be dealt with by the Spirit. Those days, some of them didn't understand because they wanted to go for programs and say, sit down. Sit down. Today is amazing the way one by one it's already starting like droplets, but it's an avalanche. It will come and you will see the songs that come from here, songs that will mentor nations, songs of warfare, songs of victory, songs of the throne. You see, most times we don't believe men till it's too late. We we'll say he said it all. I believe him. I believe you. That's why you see me stand to teach you. Do you know, let me confess, true confession. I was, I had a meeting before coming here. You know, I had a meeting and then um, just briefly met with a family and then a woman before coming, preparing to come for Koinonia. And while I was preparing, I was so tired. I sat down and I didn't know which one to do, to eat or to rest. And I stood, I was so tired. And I was telling the woman, I said, my God, all I want to do now is to sleep. But I just got up. I said, I rebuke that statement. There is a generation to mentor. There are people to raise. And she said, ah, Apostle, I know you. As soon as you are done with all this talk, the zeal of the Lord that is in you, you will quickly go and prepare and stand up. And truly, you see me standing now. I'm done here and I'm counseling for hours seven in the morning i'm out of this city just to go and just perform a function do a few things and return sacrifice but that happens because god said so god promised me that he will keep me strong and vibrant i believed him you do what i do in the strength of the flesh you will not be sick you will die i say it without exaggeration 
you literally will fall down and you will die one day my father warned me and said look my son just do your best take out time once in a while and rest I said I know and I believe I will rest but the king's business requires haste there are destinies to be raised there are impartations to come to nations hallelujah praise the Lord I went to bed to five it was as if I just turned my head and I checked the time and it was morning the last thing I remember was that I was going to take there was water by the side of my bed and a drink and I remember I was preparing that in five minutes I'll just turn and take a sip and I had slept it was already morning and I got up had to brush up on my notes to come why because when you are about his business he will maintain you there are things you cannot lie about not for long it will be clear see let me tell you this God has been faithful to me you see these hands I have laid these hands on different sicknesses and diseases communicable ones I'm not supposed to be alive today based on the things and the people I have touched you must believe God God told me forget about cars and houses focus on me I've raised men already to do that for you I remember when someone came and met me to give me a car I was happy and God said it's not your car just pray for him and let him carry his car and go I wanted to say God the next time you will give me lift <laughs> but I was happy Do you believe what I share with you? Can you spare me five more minutes? Are you tired? I know you are tired. You are just passionate. But listen, let me tell you this. You must love tomorrow more than today to enter that tomorrow. If you love your today more than tomorrow, the door has closed. Closed by you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When I was in secondary school and the fire of God fell upon us, we started a prayer group and a prayer movement called Operation Katakus. Yes. We would pray sometimes immediately after preps. It was supposed to be a little one hour prayer. And some of these weak spirited people who are feeling sleepy would just tell them, look, go to your hostel and sleep. One hour it will become a vigil i was made the timekeeper of the school in js2 that was the level of the hand of god that was upon my life quarter to five someone would wake me every day without fail quarter to five that was when i started having encounters with this i didn't even know that they were angelic encounters 15 minutes on the dot to five don't tap me i wake up Father, help this generation in the name of Jesus. Help us to be so consumed by the reality of the realm of the spirit and the power that that realm wields upon this realm. All you see is not all there is. Hallelujah. So when you hear a word, like you are blessed when you hear a word like doors be open many of us just say amen as a christian response to a man of god's prayer but a few people will believe god and take him literally and said when i said amen i said let it be so where is it oh god i said amen i expect an answer hmm. the last that i will give us and then we're done territorial advancement the last key let me five minutes and we are done the power are we ready the power of consistent results one of the kingdom keys allocated for dominating a territory is consistent results
let me tell you this consistent results shows that there is understanding consistent results show that there is knowledge consistent results show that mastery has been attained consistent results years ago i started watching a man who would lift people off wheelchairs and crutches as though it was a joke he would stand and look at them and just pray a simple prayer sometimes even be sarcastic about it and throw the wheelchair and throw the crutch and said walk and that's the end of it in in about six years he raised about nine thousand crutches and wheelchairs his his church is full of crutches around the church i said this is mastery i must go down to see him he was in south africa and i traveled he's going to be with the lord now prophet kobus van rensburg i traveled to south africa to meet him and i met him and i told him why i was here i was not there for for pilgrimage i was not there for entertainment i was there for business i said i desire this grace i desire it it is a grace Ten thousand crutches cannot be mistaken no many unbelieving members yet they were also raising crutches you could see that they didn't have faith yet they would say walk and joke with it you see many times when the leader that you are under is carrying a grace you will cheaply receive that grace listen when you receive that grace and receive that dimension many times you will see how cheap it works some of you here who are under this ministry and under this covering you will go for meetings casually and just say let's pray and the power of god is here and you'll be as if you are acting drama and even you you have not really studied the dynamics of the anointing many people started getting prosperous in living faith before they read about prosperity it was later they found out they were even sinners because they were not tightened yet they were still enjoying abundance say okay lord forgive me now i'll start doing it properly some people were strolling and just saw prayer city prayer was going in and they said let me go and find out what is going on there and from that day they cannot sleep again till they pray because a grace came upon them let me tell you this results are governed by three things one light two please listen results are governed by three things one light two association three graces these are the factors that govern results in this kingdom never forget it light the depth of the spiritual illumination you have as it pertains the area where you want to see result number two association god called abraham and lot went with him and then number three graces if there is any area in your life where you are not commanding results check for these three things one there is a dimension of spiritual illumination that you are lacking number two there is a community of people with that grace that you have not honored and number three there is a dimension of grace that has not rested upon you it is easy to produce results when you know the laws that govern them hallelujah do you know let me tell you as little as this thing our, our time is up as little as what i shared with you is if you understand this mystery my brothers and my sisters there are dimensions that god has cheaply committed to this ministry you will enter into it like a joke you know it pains me when i see certain graces that are so lavishly available but there is no widespread testament of people who have entered that dimension the knowledge you have the spiritual understanding number two your association not just in terms of friends also the covenants the tribe that you come under that you are grafted into and then number three the graces that are upon your life any man who is exposed to these tripartite forces will be a strange man upon the earth when i traveled to south africa to meet prophet kobus van rensburg 
I'd wanted going to meet Robert Lairdon and then Charles and Francis Hunter. Unfortunately, I couldn't meet them. I sat down and I listed like an architect the graces that will construct the house. I listed them and I searched for the individuals that had those graces. Like a chef says, I need salt. Where do we buy salt? Sabo. Where do we? This is how I listed these graces. Like a bee. And I searched for them one by one. I was very, very foolish at a point in my life. I knew that wisdom will be part of the graces that I would need for my life and I would need for this apostolic office. I pursued Dr. Miles Mudok and Bishop David Oyedepo. These were the two dimensions of, of wisdom that came to my life. I saw the wisdom of God at work in their life and I said, this foolishness must end. I pursued that grace. I pursued it with all my heart. Are we together? Yes. Results. Whoever commands results becomes the leader. Whoever commands results becomes the force to reckon with. I submit to you that many of the dimensions that you see in my life and in this ministry, they are not guesswork. There is an exact knowledge that is back of them. They will continue to be reproduced again and again. When there is increase, when there is the outstretched hand of God, when there is favor, there is prosperity. When there is passion and hunger for God, these are results. Please do not join the people who ignore results. I'm wrapping up. I know the rain is done, but just, just be patient. Make sure as they are coming out, they are still listening, please. You are going to pray for results. Listen to me. I told myself, God, there is no need to be in ministry if I'm not producing results. That you bear fruits and that your fruits abide. Much fruits. Some of you who are visiting this place for the first time will go back and know that God is here. You met him. It's called results. The next time you come, you will not come alone. Let me tell you, empty pews are proof of lack of results. It's an uncomfortable truth, but it is true. Are we together? In fact, empty anything. Emptiness is proof that you do not understand the laws that govern you. I knew, I saw the way pastors used to raise money. Now, please, I'm not being sarcastic with all respect and all honor to men of God and the body of Christ. But I saw the way people were being manipulated to raise money. I saw the way pastors, birthday pastor, I'm, I said, no, this is not Bible. But then I asked myself a question, how will you eat? And how will the ministry thrive? And then I said, I have to go to the word of God and find out. And then I found out that God can open a door for a man that no man can shut. I found out that there was an exactitude to the blessing of God. Let me show you one of the most recent scripture I found. 1 Corinthians 29, 12. I apologize, we're wrapping up. 1 First, First Chronicles 29, 12. 1 Chronicles 29, 12. I saw this scripture in my dream. I was sleeping and this scripture came and I woke up and I saw it and I rejoiced. I said, that means God is shifting me to another dimension. Both riches and what? Honor come from you. You reign over all of them. It's a dangerous scripture. Both riches and honor come from thee. You reign over all. And in thy hand is power and might. Look at all the things we need in one verse. Riches, honor, power, might, greatness, strength. God is the owner. I saw it in my dream. I went to sleep home and I saw that scripture. I got up and I searched it. I said, this is this. 
if this scripture were a clot it would have faded by now i've prayed this scripture into my life see i stepped into the grace for favor when i prayed for favor for one month that was my prayer request not for a selfish reason lord a man can carry favor bodily let me be an example of it do you know many times when i pray these things is so that i will bring it and you will receive it's not so much for myself when i received the grace for long life it, it was with speed the day i was coming for koinonia it was as if i was going for my wedding reception give me chance let me stand these people were singing and i couldn't wait for them to finish singing so that i'll climb up i came with a grace that i did not have the grace for long life you can carry graces like a fisherman when you catch something and you push your hook you draw it force it out when you see what it is this kingdom is a kingdom of deep mysteries deep mysteries deep mysteries hallelujah both riches and honor come from you thou reignest over all and in thy hand is power and might and in thy hand is to make great look god is the maker of greatness when god selects you to be great he selects you to be the face of a generation it doesn't matter who thinks what or does not think it you can never sustainably be light and salt until you understand the power and the mystery of retreats isaiah chapter 40 please let's begin our reading from verse 28 the bible there spells clearly the condition of man it says has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth he fainted not neither is he weary it's a question there is no searching of his understanding now 29 it says he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increased strength. Here is the condition of man that necessitates retreat. Ready? One to read. Let's read together. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. This is not a negative pronouncement. It's a description of a condition that is common to all men. That the wear and tear that happens to you spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and even physically, provided you are bound in this mortal body, that that wear and tear is present with all men. That even the youth, the Bible says the glory of the young men is their strength, but that the youth will faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. The bailout is in 31, but they... That means not everybody will be interested in this spiritual process. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. The Bible says by this mystery they will run and it will look like they never get tired. You are human but why are you not tired? Because they have found the power and the excellency of retreats. And then they shall walk and not faint. What is a retreat? Let's discuss this point for seriously. A retreat is a time set apart to be with the Lord. Please write. A retreat is a time set apart to be with the Lord. To obtain renewal, direction, and fresh empowerment. A retreat is a time set apart to be with the Lord. To obtain renewal, to obtain direction and to obtain fresh empowerment. I'll take it one last time. That a retreat is a time set apart to be with the Lord. To obtain renewal, to obtain direction and to obtain fresh empowerment. So when we talk about a retreat for a believer, it means a time that you set apart to be with the Lord. Retreats can be corporate. That means a corporate organization, a church can have a retreat, an individual, a family can have a retreat. But my emphasis here for tonight is a personal retreat. 
Hallelujah. And there are a number of things that must be captured in your retreat. So you can call it 4A or let me just guide you. Many of us do not understand what we need to do during a retreat. It's important that I spell this out just to create a guide for us so that you will have an effective and a rich retreat. Many people just lock themselves and they fast and pray, sleep and wake up, even watch movies and go out. That is not an effective retreat. There are a, a few things that must happen in a retreat. Otherwise, it's not a retreat. Number one, thanksgiving. A retreat is a moment of lavish, uncensored thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Psalm 92 from verse 1 to 4. Let's hurry up. We're discussing retreats as one of the instructions and now just helping us to shed more light. What and what should happen in a retreat? Number one, thanksgiving. It is a good thing, the Bible says, to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises to thy name, O Most High. Reading to 4, verse 2. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. 3. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound, verse 4, it says, For thou, O Lord, had made me glad through thy walk. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. Your retreat is not complete. It's not even started if you do not start with thanksgiving. So you are asking, Apostle, if I set out time with God, what should happen? What are the activities that define a potent retreat? Number one thanksgiving you lock up yourself and you say lord thank you look what you've done in my life thank you for your mercy is that true you begin to list them you count your blessings one by one it says oh that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his marvelous works to the children of men he has broken the gates of brass. He has caught the bars of iron in sunder. Lord, thank you for life. Thank you for grace. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. I lay me down and I slept. I wait for the Lord sustain me. The last time I checked, statistic tells us that eight people die per second. Eight people die per second. I don't know how, I don't know what's the current figure now eight people that means from the time i started this message till now count how many people have died we need to learn to be grateful to god be thankful count your blessings and mention them one by one lord look what you've done in my life look what you've done in this ministry look what you've done in this family i am here to say thank you like the one leper the bible records that jesus was on his way passing but when the one leper returned he found him still waiting there he waits for your gratitude thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting my head. For some of you in the midst of the chaos and the economic crisis in this nation and across Africa, God preserved you as if you did not stay here. Some of you did not even have jobs yet, you never begged. How could you be so insensitive and careless when you get before the God of heaven, you, you get down on your knees and say, thank you. You have changed my story. You have turned my mourning to dancing, my sorrow to joy. That all who knew me can no longer identify me because the Lord has magnified fight me in the midst of his people learn to be thankful number two what do I do in a retreat be an honest appraisal of the year or the season 
an honest appraisal this is the second thing you do in a retreat an honest appraisal appraisal is spelled a p p r a i s a l a p p r a i s a l an honest appraisal of the year past or the season past a retreat is usually is uh, there are all kinds of retreats i'm not going in there i've done those teachings and i'm sure that i will do it again next year but just for you to know that there are periodic retreats weekly there are monthly retreats but there are strategic retreats at defining moments in your life like maybe birthdays or end of year like we have it now because a major season is changing in your life an honest appraisal of the year or the season past in some 30 in in proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 the bible says through desire a man having separated himself he says he seeketh and intermeddleth with wisdom when you when you take out time to be thoughtful and to appraise the year you appraise the year against a number of parameters number one your spiritual life i'm just listing them number two your mental transformation number three your health and your wellness number four purpose and your assignment to what degree did you advance on that wise number five your finances number six your relationships there are indices that you use to appraise yourself don't just get there and say did I make money this year yes I think it was a nice year no we always use parameters like money and physical things to measure how good the year was but the success is a is a composite of many dimensions you're excelling in all these dimensions is, is what adds to your overall success your spiritual life mental transformation your health and your wellness your finances your assignment relationships Take an honest appraisal of your life. Is someone learning now? How was this year 2022 spiritually? Can I say I made progress? My prayer life, my word study life. Did I grow in character, loving and, and, and walking in the ways of God? How about mental transformation? Did you submit yourself to superior materials to build your mind, build your philosophies and your orientation? How about your health? Hallelujah. How about your finances? Some of you didn't do well this year in your finances. And the product, you see, you do not prosper off the economy. You prosper off your understanding. It is true. The economy only contributes to your prosperity. It's not the basis of your prosperity. It is your understanding, your philosophy, your overall understanding. It is not even what you do. It is what you know that supports what you do. So if you find out that it was a bad year, sadly speaking, financially, there's no need beating yourself down. That's the purpose of a retreat. You take inventory. Some of us were blessed by God this year, but we were careless over our finances. If you take inventory, millions, tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions and even billions got into our hands. But there may not be anything to show for it because we spent it like the prodigal son and now we are feeding with the swine. But thank God the prodigal son showed us that there is still hope. He says, I will arise and I will go to my father. In your case, you must arise and go from where you started correctly from. Are we learning? Very, very powerful. How about purpose and assignment? Do you know there are people, I was so touched by the testimony of the gentleman here. He said when he got a job, notice the decline in his life now. There are people, the moment they become blessed, or the blessings of the Lord start speaking in their lives, especially financially, let me tell you the truth, it takes a greater level of discipline to still maintain spiritual things when you are blessed. Because now you have options. There are many people that look good. They are not good. It's just the economic condition that made them that way because there is no option. You are, you are righteous to the degree to which we see the alternatives in your life are we together if you are poor don't say you are humble by what parameter 
we have to see we, we, we you have to be given an opportunity to see that i can go this way but i choose to remain this way now you are deserving of honor are we learning now this is very important an honest appraisal of your life let me tell you the truth do you know why a retreat is personal because that is a time where you tell the absolute truth before god if you lie to yourself in a retreat I don't know what to call you now. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. A time of appraisal is when Jesus himself the light shines his light upon your life and you see yourself in the state of who he is ah, this year I did not do well in my spiritual life this year I was careless this year as a father I was not responsible over my family there's nothing to be ashamed of you are before the God of heaven this year I've been I was insensitive to my wife and my children maybe because of the financial pressure I did something that I did not believe I would do Lord you see when you have an understanding from the place of appraisal now you can cry for his mercy thoughtfulness is powerful to lock yourself and sit down ah, I lost this favor door because of carelessness and insensitivity what can I learn from it Is someone learning? Number three, what do you do during a retreat? I hope I've not lost you. What do you do during a retreat? A retreat is a moment to get direction for the next season. Please write it down. When you are done with appraisal, next is direction. Direction. Your retreat is not over if you come out confused. Because you have, that is the assignment of that place. Why am I teaching you this? So that you know what to avoid. It means anything that can distract you should not follow you to the place of retreat. For instance, movies. Except if it's a movie that teaches you something. Most of us, you already know your vulnerability. When you are going for a retreat, be serious. You can't carry a series, uh, 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 what they call this thing, people. You know, all the, the movies and all of that. And then you pray for 30 minutes and then you just promise yourself that I'll just watch for 10 minutes or football or something. And before you know it three days people clap for you thinking you were flogging it out with destiny whereas you allowed yourself to be distracted see look up please laugh but listen the Bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and it says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was said where before him he endured the cross and despised the shame if your phone would distract you off it personally during a retreat I off my phone completely or I can put it on flight mode if I need to use it maybe get some information from it you can on it by 12 midnight for 10 minutes so that all the text messages that should come in come in and then you off it back in case there's an emergency Apostle, I'm off my phone. You see, that you should go and flog out that issue in a retreat. The fact that you cannot give up uh, gadgets just to spend time with God, it means then that you may not be having the kind of focus it takes for a great destiny. Someone shout direction. direction. Our speed in life is based on the direction we have. Your life will always slow down if you don't know where you are going. Even in driving, if you know where you are going, you will run with speed and arrive there. But if you don't know where you are going, you have to slow down in case you are wrong. It's dangerous to turn the path of destiny in confusion. Psalm 32 and verse 8. This is a prophetic word for someone. Psalm 32 and verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eyes. Someone shout amen. 
Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 6, it says, In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. God can direct men. In the place of retreat, you are flogging it out. And God says, listen, this location you are, you need to move to another one. One word from God can bail you out. Are we together? Yes. I told you that the power of God only supports what is the will of God. The, 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 the administration of spiritual power is with respect to the will of God. Outside of the will of God, the power of God does not have an assignment. The assignment of the power of God is to bring you into the will of God. Direction. Number four. What should happen in a retreat? Are you ready? Planning and resolutions for the next year. When you obtain direction from God, it is now time to plan. Planning and resolutions for the next year. So you have opened up yourself for appraisal. You know what is right and what is wrong. You have obtained direction from God. It's now time to plan. I think it's God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, that said, praying without planning is playing without knowing. It is true. There is a place for planning. Most believers don't plan. We stumble into our tomorrow and we meet it unplanned. Sadly, we do this as individuals. We do this as corporate organizations, as families. People just enter the year sometimes with blind, unrealistic resolutions. You have to settle down and to plan. How will my 2023 be like? Okay, God has spoken. I have heard. I know where he's taking me. I need to plan. Luke chapter 14. 28 to 30 Luke 14 28 to 30 for which of you intending to build a tower seated not down first and counted the cost that's planning the assignment of planning is to help you count the cost whether he have sufficient to finish it 29 less happily after he had laid the foundation and is unable to finish it all that behold him begin to mock him saying 30. This man began to build and was not able to finish. The ability to finish also depends on proper planning. I'm going to plan my spiritual life for 2023. My work made me so busy and it affected my prayer life, my word study life. I have to create a system that factors in my life. Please look at me. Do you know why many people, uh, I'm, I, and I'm saying this now with respect to you know the younger generation do you know why many people finish from school colleges of you know education universities and then their spiritual lives go down because within that environment there is not much you are doing you don't have responsibility of children you don't have other things so it is just maybe lecture prayer fellowship and that's all now you are a father of three now you are a father of four now you are a senior executive in a corporation that your presence can be called anytime they can call you impromptu and say please be in london tomorrow by evening you have to redesign your spiritual life to factor in the current reality in your life if you use the template of campus where you could pray for eight hours non-stop you will be an ineffective person that worked because you did not have certain responsibilities for some of you sadly maybe then your parents were alive then certain people who were who supported you were alive now you have to redefine your approach to insist that by all means your job your growth your responsibilities do not affect your spiritual life this is the product of planning 350,000 naira five years ago is not 350,000 naira today do you agree with me And this is not just a Nigerian thing in all fairness. This is a global thing. It affects everywhere. It's just that, of course, we have a unique expression of our own. But I'm saying that generally, there is no nation that has been immune to a lot of, you know, economic heat and all of that. So it means you need to plan. You need to plan. I'm earning 500,000 per month or 200,000 per month. Sometimes, well, it's not for me to speak to you, but sometimes... Part of planning can be to not give birth to the next child yet. Yes, sir. 
you know in africa we we do a lot of things sometimes without thinking we just keep making mistakes that later just pound on us you cannot be earning hundred thousand and you have six children it's not realistic you can't be sending them to everybody people can help you but it's not their responsibility to take care of you are we together now you ruin the life of those innocent children until they are recruited to be terrorists and the rest because there was no responsibility when you want to build a house the bible says sit down that kind of course you don't do it standing you sit down that means your mind is calm now that i'm about to do this am i prepared for this oh i'm earning hundred thousand i hate that job i need to resign if you resign what is the plan it is hundred thousand it may not be the best but it's still not the worst at least it can cover your shame in terms of your basic needs while you're trusting God to scale higher. Someone shout planning. Please take the time to plan. You are a leader over any ministry or any organization here. Have a personal retreat to plan. In Koinonia, you already know. 31st December, 6 p.m. on the dot. The prophetic word for the next year is out. Without fail, there is no excuse whatsoever. Planning. It's not something that happens just overnight. No, this is the last service. It was planned. The next service is already planned. See, this is one of the blessings that we learned in the seminary. Respectfully speaking, you see, most of the organizations that we may call orthodox and this, they are master planners. Pentecostal charismatic circles, if we are not careful, we can randomly do things and we say as the spirit leads. It is important to plan. Your child is going to school in January. They've increased his school fees. Have you seen the PTA letter? Until you see, don't buy the cow yet. You can manage with chicken and you can't go and buy a cow of 500,000 and then be begging for money for 100,000 for your child. Planning. It may not be for everybody, but this is a prophetic word for someone. In a retreat, please plan. Okay, the house rates have increased. I may not have my own property now, but how much do I pay? 1.5, 2 million naira. How did I raise the 1.5, 2 million naira the last time? Oh, it was a gift. Will it remain a gift forever? No, so I need to plan. If you know it will come through relationships, start greeting the people in advance. Since that is it's part of planning. It is funny, but it is true. Please let me have your attention. We have a lot to do. Listen, the house of God is a place of wisdom. And if we are bankrupt of wisdom, our lives will be hard. Don't send somebody a text two days to help and say, Calvary greetings. You know, I'm, 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 just, just, I, I'm just asking out how you are doing. And then 10 minutes later, here comes a long list like an exam question. Just, no, 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 no planning my wife is pregnant she's going to give birth in nine months that's nine months notice how do you say oh i didn't plan for cs what does that mean nobody prays for cs but an intelligent person you will plan what if listen we hope for the best but we prepare for anything faith is not foolishness don't be angry oh i love you this is a retreat this is, a, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching us because this thing, we, we need to bring wisdom to the body of Christ. You don't move around when your wife is already in the theater. You are just calling and say wickedness. Nobody likes me. No. Shout amen, please. Amen. Plan. As a father, if you did a bad job over your family, don't worry, don't beat yourself down, but plan. Why is the spiritual life of this family going down? Okay, it's because we don't pray. Maybe that time of fellowship is not there. Maybe I'm too busy to spend time with my wife and children. How can I be a better father? I'm an exceptional CEO, but my family is dying. Something needs to go well. Create a program, even if it's once in a month. I'm going to spend some time with my family. Anybody who calls you, tell them, please, I'm spending time with my family. This is one of the blessings of the white and people in the West, sincerely. You can literally give an excuse that I'm spending time with my family and they will respect it. What our great, wonderful nation. Spending time with your children. So it's us that don't have to, okay.
let's finish up what should happen in a retreat obtain the doing grace right doing grace in capital your retreat is not complete until you obtain the doing grace there is a grace called the doing grace the doing grace because your plans and your resolutions will come to naught if you do not put them to action to work the doing grace has a mandate to put fire upon your bones until there is execution the assignment of the doing grace is to not give you rest until you put your thoughts your plans that are on paper you make them work on two legs the in John 13 17 John 13 17 if ye know these things the bible says happy are ye if ye do them so it's not enough to know i have said i'm going to buy a car next year by the grace of god that car is five million naira i've raised two million naira we thank god for grace god is granting me grace as i plan you obtain grace you start doing doing i've made up my mind that my family will be happy this year my wife and children will not have cause to say i'm an irresponsible father that is a, an excellent plan what are you going to do about it? You obtain the doing grace. Do you know? Let me tell you the truth. Without the doing grace, all plans will come to naught. The same way many of us, you can go back to your January journal and see many beautiful things you wrote. And some of us, sadly, not even one of them has been done. It's because you missed the last ingredient of your retreat, obtaining the doing grace. Lord, let that grace come from heaven that makes men to run, that makes visions to run. The doing grace. Romans 7, 19. Romans 7, 19. Paul was speaking and he, he vocalized his frustration. He said, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would, I would not do, that I do. That means he's saying, listen, by my spirit there is a willingness to do this but i find another law there is another energy that is depleting my passion and not giving me the impetus the drive to move forward for someone here who has been planning planning forever without doing in the name of jesus let this be the season where the grace for execution comes upon you <laughs> hallelujah one day i'll get that land You've not gone around the neighborhood to even see where any empty land is. Chances are excellent you may never build. Listen, even if it is one billion you need, it will still come by faith. Don't be afraid. And for someone you want to build a house, your budget is 50 million or 100 million, depending on the kind of house. And all that you have is 1 million. Let me tell you the truth. One thing I know is that signs follow. They don't go before. If you cannot take a step of faith believing God to help you, it's better to die in his presence than to live jumping outside of his presence. There are certain risks you cannot escape. It will always be by faith. You can take that one million and buy as much blocks or sharp sand and go and pour it on that side there and say, Father, this is a sign of faith. I have made you Alpha, be Omega. I started this building with you. Now your reputation is part of this architecture for your namesake and you'll be surprised someone will call you and say are you building you say yes say god just said i should give you 10 million and before you know it the day you finish that building if they ask you where did the money come from you say sincerely even me i've added everything i don't know where the rest came from god is bringing healing to someone don't be discouraged I don't just mean bodily healing healing in your mind because the Lord is just ministering to me that there are people here who have been frustrated it looks like your life never moves forward there is you are not doing anything people are already speaking and saying, what kind of person are you it's like a complete mark time in every area of your life you are the one that we praise you are the one we more time.
tell you something I know about God. I don't know everything about him. We remain students learning him. But let me tell you something about God. God restores. This is a word for someone. Apostle, even my wasted years, my goodness, did he not say I will restore the years? Don't sit down and say, by now I would have built the house. By now I would have had the children. By mm -mm -mm -mm. There's, there's no point for regret. You are talking to the God who owns time. He's not limited to time. Look at the gentleman. He said for how many years his life had been on drugs and all kinds of things. But restoration, just like that. There is hope for a tree, even if it be cut off. Some of you, even in terms of establishment, it looks like nothing is working in your life. All kinds of witchcraft, delays, demonic things, fine rest. My God, Ba, is able to restore men and take 10 years and put it in one year. Yes. This is true for you, whether in politics and governance. This is true whether in your career life. I've not got a job and things don't seem to be working. Remember tonight is an impartation. We're getting there now. Listen carefully, ladies and gentlemen. The God that I know and the God that I serve can restore. Apostle, my prophetic grace, the, the anointing upon my life would have been at a dimension now. But I became inconsistent at a point. I became careless. I was, I, you know, I was just frost. Don't worry. Don't worry. Apostle, I would have built by now. You can imagine. I don't even have a plot of land. I am 50 years. Fine rest. The God of heaven that I know, that you know, that you have come to serve can give you rest with the dignity of kingdom integrity rest that you don't have to bend your head in shame because you maneuvered and bribed your way around no you give the healing and grace that my heart always hunger for oh Let me speak to a family here that had it rough this year and has had it rough the years past and you are saying God are you alive all we recorded this year was death of our loved ones maybe repossession of our properties whatever it is and it looks like the only thing I can say was right in my life you may say is that my walk with God did not go down but like Job I've been beaten I do not even know what to do the Bible says in Job 42 and verse 10 that God restored the fortunes of Job. So God is a restorer. Is someone learning? So that's that about retreat. The fifth instruction. What is the fifth instruction to us? Share the love of Jesus to all around you. This is the fifth prophetic instruction we are receiving tonight. You want to be light and salt, even in this season? Share the love of Jesus to all around you. You cannot afford to be passive. You cannot afford to be silent. You cannot afford to be careless as far as the love of Jesus is concerned. Share the love of Jesus to all around you. The Bible teaches us, listen, help us under the anointing. The Bible teaches that there are two principal ways to share the love of Jesus. Number one, preaching. Number two, giving. The most effective ways to do both. Number one, I repeat, preaching. Number two, giving. In truth, it may not be convenient for everybody in terms of the preaching of the gospel as we know because our world has changed. We used to do one-on-one -on -one evangelism, but right now you don't have that liberty. You can stand in front of someone and they'll call a police for you because someone will say they just kidnapped the brother last week. How are we sure you are not a terrorist? Go to the police station and wait there until you vindicate yourself. So we must redefine our strategy for evangelism. I'm saying this so you don't carry zeal and say, Apostle said we must share the love of Jesus. You just trap someone in front of his house and around the corner shouting Jesus and that person is a police officer right there and then they will handcuff you and take you to the police station so you see Jesus in giving us the great commission told us what to do go ye 
He told us where to go into all the world. He told us what to do, preach. He told us who to preach to all creation, but he didn't tell us how to do it. He left the strategy to be flexible. Every other thing is fixed except the strategy because the strategy would need to be reinvented with civilization. Hallelujah. So, but generally speaking, sharing the love of Jesus involves preaching. How shall they hear the Bible says, except there is a preacher, Romans chapter 10 now, and that should be 15. Am I right on that? How beautiful. He says, at the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. In Daniel 12 and verse 3, the Bible says, They that be wise shall shine like the stars, the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars, even forevermore. Let me tell you the truth. It is, it is a good way of maximizing your time and your days to make sure that someone comes to Jesus. There are many of us who have our loved ones. They are not yet saved. You can give it a try one more time. You sowed the seed last year. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Take that step again in love. And then giving. Giving is one powerful way I know to share the love of Jesus. If you meet a man who is hungry, it is said, put the gospel on top of a meal and give that man. Let him eat both. You don't meet a hungry man and tell him, forget about food. Just concentrate on Jesus. Spiritually, that may be right. But let me tell you, you don't know what hunger can do. Hallelujah. The truth is that this ministry, and I say it not to embarrass you. This ministry is a compendium of very blessed people. That is the truth. Yes, there are many who God is helping, but there are many people that are, they have seen the mercy of God. Now is a chance to be able to do something for someone. It doesn't have to be something with a lot of trumpet and noise, but right in your neighborhood, an IDP camp somewhere, somewhere you can just do something for someone. Gather some children that are running around and just get two or three Sunday school teachers to put them together. Let them jump around and sing and be happy and feel the love of a parent they may not have. And then just give them, even if it's a little gift, entire budget, 100,000. And God says, you did this for me, get ready to laugh next year. Jesus said, let the little children come. So whoever brings him to them is getting closer to him too. And whatever he is giving them, your own commission is there too. If Jesus said, let the little children come, don't you think the person who pushes them to him also has a share? Don't close your hands. No. Don't close your hands. I'm challenging everybody. Please make sure you do something. Let something come out from you to bless. You know, you know I'm saying this. Many of you bless me and I'm happy God bless you. But you see, let's do something for someone who cannot reward you. Some of you have an area. You, there are people who sell all kinds of things. You can just see them and say, listen, this is 5,000. This is 1,000. And they'll be surprised. For what? What did I do? Because they are not used to favor. You have reintroduced Jesus in another way for them. Let me challenge every leader here, especially if you're a leader of a corporate organization, a ministry, you can be able to do something. I'm not putting you under pressure, but this is the responsibility of being salt and light. Families can do it. The truth is we are blessed. Some of us, your phone alone can feed a nation. Your shoe alone can feed a community. I'm not saying sell your shoe and I'm not saying feel guilty for being blessed. Because this one thing again we do in Africa. People feel blessed, get blessed and we make them feel guilty for the rest of their lives. As if they are responsible for our pain. No, that should not be. That's not what I'm advocating. But I'm saying wealth is useless until it is shared. Is someone learning? Five instructions. Let me recap them. Number one, give yourself continually to the word and to prayer. Please do not forget. Number two, invest in your health and your wellness. Rest. Number three, invest in building and maintaining your relationships, your family, your friends, destiny people in your life. Number four, very important, you can stand number four. 
go on an end of year retreat go on a personal retreat make it habitual especially for every defining moment in your life and then number five share the love of Jesus to all around you through the ministry of preaching and giving hallelujah why did we call it an impartation service then what does it mean to impart to impart means number one to transfer spiritual possibilities number two to impart means to activate that which is already within you but is still in a state of dormancy impartation has two assignments listen carefully number one to transfer spiritual possibilities from a career by grace to one who is in need of it and is ready to receive but number two impartation also is responsible for activating something you already have but has not found visibility because it is dormant impartation is not always about transference impartation is also about activation there is a grace there is an ability there is a gifting there is something prophecy that is locked up within your spirit and many times it will remain dormant that way except and unless you encounter a genuine grace for impartation two examples and then we begin to pray the spiritual transfer is something that we see all through scripture that graces can be transferred Paul said in um, Philippians chapter 1 I think and verse 7 he says ye are all partakers of my grace ye are all partakers so men can partake of the grace that God has put upon his servant it's been an anthem here every time we talk about impartation we teach these scriptures numbers 27 18 and 20 it says thou shalt take Joshua he said take thee Joshua the son of Nun a man in whom is the spirit and lay your hands upon him 19 set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight I like 20 20 says and thou shalt put some of your honor upon him I told you you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is a grace nobody can honor himself honor is an anointing it is conferred upon you what is honor honor means to be rewarded and acknowledged to to match your the your true worth and your true value when the grace for honor is not on you you will never be acknowledged and rewarded to match your true worth there are many gifted and graced and blessed people but because they do not have honor you see you see that they are being treated unfairly politically economically physically simply because that grace for honor is not there the assignment of the grace for honor is to create to magnify you in the eyes of men and to insist that you are acknowledged and rewarded to match your true worth Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9 Deuteronomy 34 9 and Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom how did that come about for Moses had laid his hands upon him and the children of Israel hearkened unto him exactly as they did Moses because that grace was upon him in 2nd Kings chapter 6 and verse 17 2nd Kings 6 17 remember the story of Elisha and the young man the Bible says and Elisha prayed because Elisha was seeing a host of heaven but that gentleman was there and he could not see there was no transference of anything to him but Elisha prayed and said Lord I pray thee open his eyes the capacity was there but it was dormant and the Bible says and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha there are things you have already but it is dormant no matter how beautiful a wall clock is even if you buy a Rolex wall clock and there are no batteries powering it it will only stay there as a monument 
you can have the best refrigerator but if it's not plugged to electricity you will not see the potential many of us here carry dormant giftings and graces locked up within our bones but the assignment of an impartation is to activate it and give it visibility hallelujah so I want you to pay attention because the final stage we're just going to just flow very quickly and this impartation is not it's just going to be by speaking we're not doing oil and all of that you just receive and you'll be surprised you will leave this place and things just begin to change in your life remember I have taught you that you know what is on your cup by looking at what is on your head thou anointest my head with oil but I see the result on my cup he does not anoint the cup the cup is a testimony of what is on your head if the cup is empty don't blame the cup It's because the head is empty thou anointest my head with oil my business runs over thou anointest my head with oil the favor upon my life runs over hallelujah praise the name of the Lord at the end of this impartation let me now say it in advance like we said as a ministry we practice the art of the end of year sacrifice as a global family we have done this for many years during the last service we give God's people an opportunity with understanding and with revelation to come in with their sacrificial seeds according to first Samuel 1 21 first Samuel 1 21 the Bible says and the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow it was a practice that was done by revelation hallelujah so as a global family we do this every year number one as a sacrifice of Thanksgiving number two as a sacrifice to be able to show the Lord that my seed is part or is involved in what you are doing kingdom building and blessing God's people I, I hate to say it but I submit to you and you know by the grace of God we're a ministry that God has shown mercy I can tell you this uh, for sure so uh, this is this is not some gimmicks we're people of integrity and we love God hallelujah the sacrifice that the believers are giving is not flying to heaven it will be added to the treasury as part of that which does what you know kingdom activities so it is an opportunity God said if I were hungry is it you I will tell I will not tell you but it's a powerful practice that I have done that we have done as a global family everyone who is genuinely connected to this grace at the end of the year the end of year sacrifices with understanding and also to be able to provoke favor and to set yourself on course for the next seasons I hope you know that a harvest of money is not the only thing you get from sacrifices money is the least of the blessings that come from sacrifices there are superior ones like the presence of God weightier dimensions of the presence of God favor wisdom access to the hearts of kings and nobles access to the keys of the hearts of gatekeepers these are weightier blessings that is the capital that buys money money itself is a product the capital that buys money is called true riches if you have money you are limited I have prayed for you many times that may you never be so blessed that all you have is just money because the person who has money alone truly is not a blessed man mm -mm. the Bible says and Abraham was old and well stricken in age Genesis 24 and verse 1 it says and God had blessed him in all things God had blessed him in all things Genesis 24 and 1 God had blessed him in all things is it 24 and 1 or 21 and 1 one of them God had blessed him in all things Abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Lord had blessed him that means you can be blessed but not in all things there are many kinds of blessings it says and God is able to make all grace how many all grace you can have some but you can have all grace 
where financially you are prosperous but every time you call on one man a nation will answer you that is true prosperity there are many people who have money but they will call on nations and the money will help them call and nobody answers access to the hearts of kings if you have to use money to pay for everything in your life you are going to suffer because you will get to certain gates that the key that opens them is not money the key that opens them is the kings loving you that one money cannot do it are we together now my reward has won my battle for me the lord my lifter has won my battle for me i'm a winner man a winner man is won my battle for me lord my lifter has won my battle for me my reward has won my battle for me i'm a winner man a winner man is won my battle for me hallelujah so when we are done praying please let me speak to our global family don't give yet it's not about money let me do the praying first now we're going to do the impartation afterwards then when we are ready to give as a family of faith we can give and all the details will be given to you was someone blessed already today please rise up on your feet as one who is ready to receive Come, Dave. Oh, my lifting has come. Oh, my lifting has come. Oh, Someone open your mouth and pray. Every grace, every grace, every grace. Shabra kata bakala ko sabranda gebele ketosia. Every grace, every grace, every spiritual transference I will need to crown this year with honor. Someone is praying. pray the grace for favor visibility honor with kings access to the hearts of men visibility over your giftings someone pray Please pray. 
whether it is in governance, in politics, in business, in ministry, you are before the God of all flesh and he can surprise you by his spirit. My life has changed For I've touched your grace My life has changed My life has changed Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead please hear me any door standing in front of you that has refused to open I call upon the God of my covenant between now and December 31st please hear me in the name of Jesus that grace is coming on someone the grace for open doors that grace now the grace for apacotes katepata the grace for open doors receive that grace right now i speak to every closed door a fata be open a fata be open help them please i come in the name of he who holds the key of David it says I can open a door that no man can shut and shut a door that no man can open I say to you again I don't care how long that door has been locked in the name of Jesus we break that door open now we break that door open now we break the back we break that door open now Hear me, there is a strange grace for visibility that is coming on people. Hear me, do you know what it means to be visible? To be visible means to be acknowledged by the optical eyes. You can be there and yet not be visible. Visibility is the key for being living a rewarded life. Until people know you are there, they cannot place a demand on your gifting and grace. Haparika toskata, ebreketosketebata, abakeros, ya help them please. I don't know what has covered your glory, but in the name of Jesus, may that grace for visibility rest on you now. Let it rest on you now. Hear me. Please help them. When baby Jesus was born, no physical man announced and said a baby is born. 
there was a grace on him that made the magi they left their distance and carried gifts gold frankincense and myrrh and they came to pay homage to a baby those guys were wise men why will they pay homage to a baby so don't tell me i'm small they paid homage to a baby i say it again whatever has covered your glory so that those to honor you cannot find you i lift you by prophecy rise to a position of visibility rise to a position of visibility Now hear me, I have taught you here that all blessings come from God through men to men. All blessings come from God through men to men. All troubles come from Satan through men to men. In any case, men are always the midwives of destiny, whether it is from God or from Satan. Hallelujah. There are many of you, God said yes since January, but the man who will say yes on earth has not been available. And there are forces that have pushed them away. Let me prophesy for your destiny helpers. Because you see, let me tell you, you are as powerful as those who support what you represent. The Bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor, not in the multitude of your gift. Every man ordained by God to respond to you favorably this year and for whatever reason, maybe by demonic intrusion, their attention has been taken away from you. I speak to the north, the south and the east and the west. I command your helpers to gravitate towards you. To I command your helpers to gravitate towards you. Gravitate towards you. Hallelujah. One of the mysterious spiritual currencies that buys a life of dignity and honor, including wealth, is this grace called favor. Favor is a grace. Look up, please. The understanding that favor is unmerited is not accurate. Favor is very merited. Favor is multidimensional. The dimension of favor that is not merited is the grace that administers salvation. But favor is merited. Proverbs 13, 15. It says, good understanding procured favor. Please give it to us. Good understanding giveth favor. But the way of the transgressor, the violator of patterns is hard. How do you know favor is on your life? The real proof of favor is access to the heart of men. You know you are favored to the degree to which there are men to answer and attend to the matters of your life. Favor carries a tripartite expression. Please listen. Favor, genuine Bible favor carries a tripartite expression. Number one, unusual kindness. Number two, unusual acceptance. Number three, unusual access. Until this tripartite expression is captured in your life, it is not favor. And I've told you, if it happens only once, it's not favor. It's breakthrough, but not favor. Favor must happen repeatedly, regardless of the circumstances. Exodus 3, 21. And I will give these people favor. Pay attention, please. In the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that when ye go, help me please, ye shall not go empty. Psalm 44 and verse 3, for those who have been trusting God for structural establishment, here is the secret. They got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. But your right hand and thine arm, it says, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast a favor towards them. Esther 2.15, the B part, the little village girl Hadassah who was brought from Shushan, the Bible says, and Esther obtained favor in the eyes of how many? All. 
when favor comes on you the only person who cannot bless you is a blind man provided they have eyes to see all them that looked upon her verse 17 not even the king was spared and the king loved Esther above all the women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins I know what favor is believe me with all humility I can tell you I may not know everything about it but there is something I know about the favor of God as we have received by grace in the name of Jesus upon someone right now someone who is tired Karakos katikatia palakatos from the depth of my heart I pray for you as we have received freely may this grace called favor rest upon you now May this grace called favor rest upon you now. May this grace called favor rest upon you now. I speak to you. Obtain unusual kindness from men. Unusual acceptance with men. Unusual access to the hearts and the resources of men. The favor of God is the number one reason people succeed. I have taught you again and again that in this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. There are people who you cannot cast away. The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. There are some enemies you can't cast away. You have to pray for a rite of passage into their heart. Otherwise, that door will not be open. They are called gatekeepers. The covenant that binds them is beyond their attitude. Even in their fallen state, the throne of God still acknowledges them. You won't pray them away. You will pray for favor. For instance, there was no way to, bound, to bind and cast Pharaoh. If David was waiting, if, if Joseph was waiting to bind and cast Pharaoh to be prime minister, he would have waited forever. When God wants to lift Joseph, he will make Pharaoh have a dream that only Joseph can interpret. And give him access to the palace the wine presser said I remember my wrong this day there was a young man who has been locked up my carelessness has added two years extra to his life and they said go and bring him and the Bible says the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon not God there are men who can send for you and bring you out of certain realms it was the king that sent for Joseph never to return to the prison again Whoever needs to send for you, in the name of Jesus, may the voice of favor call them. May the voice of favor call them. May the voice of favor call them. Whoever must send for your family in this period, whoever must send for your ministry, whoever must send for your value, may favor compel them to call you. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the truth. This world is a very selfish world. It takes the favor of God for people to turn their hearts and their minds and their eyes away from the nuances and distractions and to focus on your destiny to lift you. This world is not that kind. I can tell you, people are very selfish. They are about and justifiably so. Everybody is focused on building their destiny. Whatever will make someone suspend attention over his destiny and invest his attention, his credibility, his resources on you must not be natural. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and run some captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to you, his Israel. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel, he has come to you, his Israel.
can I pray for speed? Listen, again, I have taught you in this house that the unit of destiny is time. And one of the ways to abort a glorious destiny is to corrupt the potential for achieving much with respect to time. Your lifetime is a measure of your birth from the day you transit, separated from your body. And one of the strategies to abort great destinies is that Satan creates obstructions and impedances on your way so that you are not able to do much in time. But there are two systems of advantage that have been deployed by the intelligence of God to remedy that constraint. Number one is called restoration. Number two is called speed. When these twofold forces work in the life of a man, you must gain time. Restoration brings back time. Speed accelerates you to do much within a short time. This is what I want to declare over your life. Speed is a very powerful system of advantage that much can be done within a short time. In the name of Jesus, I call upon the God who called me, the one by whom we have obtained apostles. In the name of Jesus Christ, by this apostolic and prophetic mantle, I speak to someone. May that grace for speed come upon you now. May that grace for speed come upon you now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Hallelujah. Let me declare over you. If there is anybody here that the spirit of death is already tracking, that 20, help them please, that 2022 will be your last year and then something mysterious will happen. In the name of Jesus, I pray, you shall not die. I say it to you prophetically, you shall not die. Not by the arrows that fly by day, not the noisome pestilences, not the destruction that wastes in noonday. I speak to you that a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side, but none shall come nigh you. With your eyes will you see and behold even the reward of the wicked. In the name of Jesus Christ. Job said the Lord will deliver you from six things. Yes, seven. One of it is the scourging tongues of men. Whoever has spoken against you and programmed the climate of death, I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood. I cancel that negative statement. In the name of Jesus. The final prayer I'll pray for you. Please be patient. And then, since he's here, the prophet of God, Pastor Emos Fenwa, I would just plead with him to just come, even if it's just in a minute, to make a prophetic declaration over you. And I've seen God honor the words upon his mouth. And I know what God can do when our hearts are open to receive. Hallelujah. And then we'll wrap up with our end of year sacrifice. And that will be it. I want to pray concerning your finances. Please look up. I don't believe in poverty. It's already clear. There is no point hiding or playing around it. There's, there's nothing, nothing to explain about it at all. I'm not talking of fanatism and this obsession for money. We are kingdom people driven by purpose and intelligence. So when we talk about things like this, please, this is not an attempt to fuel lust in the heart of one who is not serious with God. We're, we're talking about the king. That's why I started by telling you that our ultimate motivation is to see Jesus revealed. I have taught you here that money has three major assignments. Number one, for your comfort. God blesses us so that we can live a comfortable life. Number two, God blesses us so that we can provide financial resources for kingdom advance. Number three, God blesses us so that he can give us an opportunity to be a blessing to a dying world in a definite and a practical way. Money becomes a tool and evidence to that blessing to help us. And financially speaking, money has two assignments. Number one, efficiency. Number two, time redemption. That's it. The assignment of money in the life of any believer is to help you be efficient Efficiency is a product of gaining time. It's a dominion system. Number two, time redemption. 
it affords you the opportunity to do much within time and then to be efficient while you do so so one of the ways to waste your time is to keep you limited financially this finance thing has limited a lot of people especially because of the realities that have happened across the economy of nations I have taught you here that there are many dimensions of wealth and I am not one of those preachers that downplay the place of value, intelligence, contribution. I have taught you extensively. There is an economic system to the kingdom. There is a science to wealth. Wealth is not arbitrary. It's, it's, it's a response to value. There are intelligent people here, business people, captains of industry. And I'm not here as a man of God to downplay your pedigree. But I can tell you there is a prophetic dimension to wealth. In the Bible, every time there was an economic problem, it was not economists that were called. It was the prophet that had to answer. Why is there an economic problem? And the prophet said, by this time, tomorrow. The prophetic dimension to wealth is called sovereign wealth. This is not wealth by value. This is wealth by the finger of God. It, it happens through men, but as instructed by God. When, that, when the prophetic word comes, let me tell you what happens. The spirit of wisdom follows that prophetic word and starts looking for human actors that must make that word not look like a lie. So there were four lepers who sat down and they did not even know what started moving them. They said, why do we sit down here? That courage was not normal. It was the product of the spirit of wisdom responding to the prophecy of Elijah. Elisha in Samaria. One person sent by God can schedule a season in your life that brings you to permanent rest. Are you ready to receive? And by a prophet, he says, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, no matter how blessed you are, I have taught you here that the standard of being financially blessed is that you can give so much to the kingdom without it affecting your overall financial health. If you have not gotten to that state, it means you must open your heart for more. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the privilege of grace and apostleship, and by the power of the prophetic, I speak over someone. May that grace that makes rich, may that grace that can empower a man, rolling away financial shame from lives and families, receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Upon the works of your hands, receive it. Upon your mind, receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ. And when Saul met with prophet Samuel, Samuel told him, number one, the donkey you have been looking for has been found. Prophecy brings restoration. Number two, as you return, you will find three men holding two loaves of bread. They will salute you and give you. That is honor and favor. Number three, you will come to the garrison of the Philistines and that the hand of the Lord will come upon you and you will begin to prophesy. Truly, the prophetic can bring prosperity. It can be, not, it can be abused, but within the boundary of scripture and the boundary of doctrine for the believer, it can work wonders i say it again the man to surprise you by god i send them to you prophetically the man raised by god to be his system of help towards your life and finances to bail you out from shame and reproach receive of their ministry right now hallelujah Please let's invite Pastor Emos Fenwa for a minute or two. Be ready to receive. Open up your heart to receive as he speaks, and then we'll be ready with our sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm 65, verse 11, Thou crowned the year with thy goodness, and thy backdrop fatness. I speak as the year is running to an end. Your life shall be crowned with goodness. Goodness over your health over your ministry, over your marriage. Everywhere you go as from now, you are favored. The Lord protects you for the rest of the year. Your life is preserved. I should leave this meeting today, good news everywhere. 
within 24 hours good news everywhere text message of good news email of good news your doors are open your doors are open your doors are open receive it testimony in your mouth thank you father in jesus name we pray thank you let's appreciate him hallelujah everyone stand now it's my joy to pray over our sacrifices and our givings hallelujah not just tonight but continually um, up until we resume please everyone make sure there's no distraction I want to pray I'm a product of God's mercy and I know what sacrifice has done and can do and as a global ministry we have a responsibility by covenant and with understanding to always wrap up the year with a prophetic sacrifice I have seen God turn the lives of people my life has been turned around by the power of sacrifice and so I'm going to speak over the seeds the sacrifice um, I don't know how we'll do it I if there are people who have it here unfortunately I don't know if the ushers if we can I don't know how we're going to do it but here's what will happen God will give an opportunity I'm seeing people lift ah. there are people who came with it okay do we have ushers let's let's okay so this is what will happen please listen carefully this is what will happen as soon as I pray um, the offering baskets will go around you don't have to come out just right where you are you can just drop it make sure that the ushers are there and then you just drop it as I speak for those who are doing any electronic transfers um, it's going to be projected all our, our global family in the US Europe the accounts are there and then you can use all the provisions my apologies for those who may have any difficulty be patient and call the finance department they will help you but let's pray you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank for in my life in my Father, as a ministry and as a global family, we come before you with our hearts full of thanksgiving. We bring this sacrifice to you first because we love you sincerely. You have been good and merciful to men, families, institutions, governments, businesses, nations, regions, and as many who are connected to this ministry, kings, politicians, captains of industry, economists and all kinds of people pastors prophets apostles the fivefold we have come tonight as is our custom to honor you lord these seeds are not flying and going to heaven they will be used here on earth but we pray that the purity and the sincerity of our worship and our giving lord there are people who have come here with sacrifices of all sorts you are not a fraudster oh god you are not a scammer neither are we who represent you therefore we come by the blood of the lamb and i decree over every sacrifice you have sown in tears may you reap in joy you have sown in tears as a pastor a church a family a business a government a region in the name of Jesus, may you reap with joy. May you reap in joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. By reason of this seed and sacrifice that you are placing upon the altar, in the name of Jesus, may adversity be far forever from your life. May the sacrifice that you are placing right now become a prophetic ladder that shoots you into dimensions unimagined. I cry to the God of my covenant. God, I pray. I cry from the depth of my heart over your people. Let no one here give and regret it. 
let no one here give and feel they were defrauded lord there are people you will surprise them even before the service ends in the name of jesus christ by reason of this sacrifice let death be averted by reason of this sacrifice let prophetic connections of all sorts happen by reason of this sacrifice may your health be preserved and hear me if there is anyone here in any kind of financial trouble personally or corporately your ministry is in debt your family is in debt your business is in debt or you are in debt i decree and declare by the power of the prophetic come out of that situation now come out of that situation now this seed you are sowing may your children to the fourth generation reap from it in the name of jesus christ amen and amen please go ahead and give those across the globe now is your time to give who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, Amen. Amen, 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 Amen. Amen, 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 Amen. Amen, 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 Amen. 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 Excellency, God bless you, sir. God bless you. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you so much. The former Senate President, let's honor him again. Give him a big, big God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah. You are here and you are yet to make Jesus Lord of your life. Please, let's minimize movement. This is our final service. Let's honor Jesus. As you heard me teach, the Holy Ghost began to speak to you that in this final service of 2022 you should not come and go back the way you came you heard the testimony of the gentleman for some of you you were invited some of you are in all the overflows you're outside and you are among the many who are following from across the globe now is an opportunity for you to make Jesus Lord of your life the issue of being saved and being born again is not a religious issue at all the Bible declares that ye must be born again then there is a second category those who have given their hearts to the Lord but for some reason your life has gone haywire and you need restoration come let him come I'm going to count one to five very quickly because of our time I like you to boldly leave your seat and come and stand here right now this is our final service for 2022 
wherever you are inside all the overflows outside and for those who are following online by way of television by way of the internet or by way of a rebroadcast Jesus is giving you a new opportunity let's honor them as they come come if you're coming please run come 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 and we're standing here only because and we're standing here only because you made, you made a way Jesus this is our final service we have a minute and then we're done with church please come we believe in the salvation of souls it is at the core of what we represent and so let me encourage everyone please spare us a minute while we honor this and then we're done thank you for your patience if you're coming please run join them I'm about to lead God's people to pray all who are in the overflow please move to your LED screens those outside move to your LED screens those following from your homes, your offices, your following by way of um, the internet. Now is an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. You cannot afford to let another day pass without making this noble decision. Thank you very much for those of you who are here, young, old, male, female. You're welcome. Jesus welcomes everyone. May I request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender to Jesus. And please say this after me, mean it from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I declare that I believe in you. I declare that I love you with all my heart. I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I receive forgiveness. I receive a new life and I declare that from tonight and forever I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name keep your hands lifted father we thank you for bringing these ones the Bible declares that as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away they have come by the authority of Scripture I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken from off your life. I call you recipients of the life of God. Bona fide recipients in the name of Jesus. And I declare that you begin to walk in righteousness from tonight. Every habit that needs to die, dies. Every challenge that needs to go, it leaves you right now. In the name of Jesus. From tonight, you go forward ever and backward never. For it is in Jesus' matchless name that we have prayed. Congratulations. God bless you. Let me request very quickly that you follow our counselors to my right, which will be your left. Very quickly, they will have a word with you and you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them very quickly. Thank you. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia? Hallelujah. For all of you who will be traveling, I declare safety for you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare that this will be the best season for you ever make sure that you pay attention to these instructions that you have received tonight and for all who have come our dignitaries I truly love and honor and celebrate and appreciate you thank you for taking the time let's give them a big god bless you those from the business political class captains of industry thank you very much our international guests one more time we bless you let's give them a big big god bless you and for all who have traveled outside of Abuja, we thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Pastor Sir, we thank you again and your dear wife and your team. May the Lord bless you. The team that came in from Zaria, we returned from Zaria yesterday. All of you, may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Let's rise up as a family of faith as we share the grace and then wrap it up for the year. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, let it rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. May God bless you, Koinonia. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year.
Financially and otherwise, I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain. 